Hey, what's up, ecosystem? How do car haulers find loads? Sounds easy, right? It's Tuesday Nights Live on Auto Transport Intel. I'm Jay, your host. Welcome to the show. Hey guys, hey welcome back again to Auto Transport Intel, I'm Jay your host. I want to welcome you back to the show, listen if it's your first time here, I want to thank you for tuning in, I really do appreciate it, I really do go live every Tuesday night at 8 o'clock central, and we're always here, we're talking about all things car hauling, and um, you know, if you got new car shipper questions, if you're a new car shipping customer, you got questions, what's happening, what am I doing, where, where am I entering my information, who should I talk to? Um, if you're a new car hauling business and you need some coaching, we can help you with that too. If you got questions about equipment, truck, trailer, insurance, you need a referral, a recommendation, or you just want to talk and hang out on Tuesday nights, well, that's what we're all about. Uh, and it's all car hauling. As you can see, we got folks jumping in the live chat already. So I'm going to be looking over here. I'm looking in the live chat. And, um, you know, I got the list, I got the rundown here. So, uh, you know, first. I start up the car hauler, I bring in the car hauler, I welcome you back to Tuesday, and then in a couple minutes I'm going to jump into the live chat. We're about two and a half minutes into the show, and it's 8.04, so oh man, I'm already a minute and a half behind, so that's alright, we can deal with it. And then I'm going to say hello to the, to the live chat for a while, because I really like people tuning in, saying hello, uh, it's a really big part of the show. And then we're going to jump into the industry news. Industry news is the segment where, you know, I pulled memes off of Facebook and maybe it was a text message and was relevant to car hauling or a question or a joke or something messed up or maybe, you know, another car hauler in the ditch, whatever it is. That's our industry news. And I encourage you to, you know, send me the memes. You know, there's a lot of groups on Facebook that don't want memes. I want the memes. All right. I like memes. All right. Cool. Our first interview tonight at about the 30-minute mark in the show might run over a little bit into that 40-minute mark. Um, we're going to talk to Ron at NYC Traffic, Inc. He just called me today. He just contacted me, wanted to talk about the show. Uh, I thought he had some good input as far as how do car haulers find loads, and so he's going to be on the show first. That's the way it works. If you want to be on the show, you could be on the show. It's autotransportintel at gmail.com. Just send me an email. And then we're going to have our panel discussion. You know, I've gotten really into having the panel discussions. There's four of us talking. Um, that's about an hour into the show. And tonight's panel is how do car haulers find loads? I mean, how do car haulers find loads? Are they on your app? Where are they? Are they in the parking lot? And then uh, we're going to wrap it up. We're going to have another interview. We're going to talk to Candy at Jacksport Storage in Jacksonville. Um, she's got some interesting stuff to talk about, which is actually going to lead us into a future show. Um, there's actually a lot to, to learn and a lot going on at the port. So, man, if you got port questions, you got port problems, um, or just want to talk about car hauling and stick around, or maybe, you know what, some people can't even join the show for a couple hours because they're out working right now. So if that's you, I look forward to you sticking around uh, talking to me and Candy and the crew. So uh, let's go back into the live chat and see what's going on. 
Uh, oh, Crypto Trucker made it in first. Hey, what's up, Crypto? Yeah, we got to get together sometime and um, talk about cryptocurrency. There's a lot to learn. I got a lot to learn about cryptocurrency. And that's what this show is all about is learning and sharing and having fun. Uh, and uh, Dave at Clarksville Trucking says simmer down. He's going to be in the live uh, panel tonight once again. In fact, I think that's three weeks in a row for Dave and Ty and me in the panel. And then our fourth in the panel tonight is Paul of Max Premier Transport. Um, and he specializes in enclosed and motorcycles and stuff like that. So if you want to learn more about enclosed, you're going to want to stick around for that. Um, let's see here. James Terrence. Hey, what's up, James? Welcome to the show. I think, I think it's your first time here, James. So I want to welcome you. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate it. And hopefully this show is informative and fun and worth the time. I had a, I recently had a YouTube comment, something about, um, if I could just cut down on the chit chat. Okay. I'm not even sure how I would do that. So, but if you've got ideas of how to cut down on the chit chat, let me know. And don't be afraid to hit that like button. This is a good time to do that. DP Dispatch Services says, hello, what's up, Davison? Welcome back to the show. Thanks for tuning in. I hope things are going well for you. There are many friends of the show, and Davis is, Davison is a friend of the show, um, even if I do add too many S's. Uh, Matt, and anytime towing Vermont. Hey, what's up, Matt? Welcome to the show, man. Hope everything's going well. Yeah, we got a lot of snow here in Kansas City. So I know you guys have snow up in Vermont. Snow on snow. By the way, this weekend, uh, the Chiefs are playing the Patriots, and it is going to be one cold mother in Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. So get your boots ready. Um, Bad Apples checks in. What's up, Bill? See, now I know your name. If you send me an email, check it out. You send me an email, I actually open the email, I respond to the email, and then we talk back and forth, and then we get to know each other. So whether you go by, you know, an alias or a passport name or, you know, some kind of pseudonym from Men in Black, whatever it is, I want you to contact me and join the network. So good to have you aboard, Bill. Thanks for uh, thanks for contacting me. Serge Carholler says, hello. Hey, what's up, Serge? Yeah, that's right, Serge. I'll tell you what. So this is a good time to mention this. Um, we are going to be live next week. We are going to be at Creeps Tea House in West Springfield, Massachusetts. Let's do, there we go. We're going to be at 261 Union Street, West Springfield, Massachusetts. And yeah, that's right. Some of that's in Russian. So no problem. But yeah, we're going to be there. Auto Transport Intel and Serge the Car Hauler. We're going to be there. We're going to be live. We're going to be together, and we're going to be talking about car hauling. A little bit of car hauling, a little bit of tea. I think they got uh, some great menu items at Creeps Tea House. So listen, if you can join us, great. Um, if you can't, no problem. Don't worry about it. We're going to be live. It's still, we're going to be live on YouTube, and we're just we're going to be together. We're going to be at Creeps Tea House. So that is in, uh, that is in seven days. So looking forward to that. Um, and you were the eighth one in here, Serge? Wow, that's pretty crazy. Hey, late but here. No, you're not late. That's Market Trucking Answers. Listen, if you've got trucking questions, check out Trucking Answers on YouTube. I'll be running Mark's, uh, I got a little promo ad that I got. Uh, I was live with Mark talking one day on his uh, channel, and he was kind enough to plug Auto Transport Intel. So I captured it, made it into a video. Now I roll it on my show easy peasy so welcome back to the show mark and trucking answers i appreciate it by the way mark we have trucking business freedom this friday it's that time again once a month in the middle of the month on a friday one o'clock eastern time me and mark co-host trucking business freedom which is if car hauling is a niche trucking is a unmanageable you know <laughs> Almost spun off my own show. That's trucking business freedom. Oh, man. I almost went out of focus there, too. So, anyways, that's this weekend, this Friday, 1 o'clock. If you like trucking, boy, oh, boy, will you love trucking business freedom. It's one hour about trucking business in the news. Okay, the one and only's here. Hey, what's up, one and only? Welcome back to the show. Thanks for saying hello. Good to see you back. You are part of the core. And, um... It's fun, you know. It is, you know, it's interesting. I go into kind of a lull 
about a half hour before this show, I, I, I think I, I feel kind of quiet and, you know, I'm on, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm wondering what's going to happen. And now it's here, it's 45 minutes later and, you know, fireworks are exploding and everyone's, you know, high-fiving in the streets. Um, it's like a Mick Jagger video. Uh, Big Blue 12V, I'm here, I'm here, let's go already. <laughs> okay, 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 too much useless chit-chat, jeez. Well, welcome to the show, Big Blue. I really appreciate you tuning in. Um, I thank you for your uh, for joining. I think it's your first time here, and I appreciate you saying hello. And I hope I can live up to the hype. Uh, Jayla four five six JF. The intro music gets me crunk every time. I know it gets. I get kind of excited about it too. Um, that I think it's called Dirt Road Traveler. Available on iTunes. That's uh, a joke. I don't know where it's available, but. Uh, it's available every Tuesday night at 8 o'clock Central Time. CM is leasing cool. You know, it's a good way to learn. It is a good way to learn. And I'll tell you what, you know who you want to ask? During our live panel tonight, which will start in about an hour, um, Ty, Dave, and Paul are all veteran car haulers. You know, I'm not afraid to say this. The thing is, here's the deal. I started as a dispatcher, and I'll end as a dispatcher. And in between, I'm making a YouTube show, which means I've never driven a truck. I never loaded a car, unloaded a car. Then again, neither did the brokers, right? So um, I'm here to help the ecosystem talk and learn together, but I leave the really juicy nuggets up to some of the experts. And on our live panel, you are going to find such information that you're looking for. So I hope you'll stick around. Uh, Whoop is back with us. Hey, what's up, Whoop? Welcome back to the show. Thanks for saying hello. Thanks for tuning in. And thanks for t participating. Pull Dog Transport is back. Pull Dog's in the house. What's up, Chris? Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate it. Ernest Martin is back with us. Always, Ernest. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, Steve Cover. Hey, what's up, Steven? Thanks for tuning in. First time listener, last time caller. Just a joke. I, I love the phrase. That's why I never say it correct. Justin Smith is with us. Hey, what's going on, Justin? Welcome to the show. Thanks for saying hello. I really do appreciate it. Oh, and Chris sent me an email. Check out the pick. Well, let's see. Let me check my email. Oh, wow. What do we got here? Uh, oh, my goodness. Oh, you got to see this one. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, probably just, it, just another run and drive is what it is. Let's see here here's chris's pick um and so yeah i mean if you as you can see if you if you send me something now autotransportintel at gmail.com you too can be a part of the show here's chris's pick teeter-totter wow ain't she a beaut what's that running 35 cents a mile <laughs> just kidding nobody would ever do that that is a beaut wow that's nice. Um, but that makes sense. That's on a single call rollback. You know, why not, right? So there you go. All right, so thanks for the pick, Chris. I appreciate that. And just like that, Chris participated in the show. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, Justin says, my first time here buying my Ram 3500 in a few months. Watching for more info. Great. Great. This is a great place to get information. Um, and again, in the whether you're in the live chat or um, during the live discussion panel, or maybe you are putting a comment below the video. You know, you missed the show, you comment below the video, I will tap somebody on the shoulder, maybe punch them. I'll punch somebody in the shoulder and make sure they respond to you. Because um, I really do want everybody to get whatever they need to get out of the show. There's a lot of information out there. And... Um, and yeah, and I also, I'll tell you, I, I'm, I'm, I'm still looking to make some deals maybe with um, a financial lender and a um, equipment uh, seller of to come on the show and sponsor the show and be a part of answering some of those questions. So I'm hoping that happens soon. One and only, hey, what's up? How's it going? Yo, M Fields, hey, Jay Marcus at Exclusive Luxury Transport, Las Vegas, say what's up and really loving these shows. Well, Marcus... At exclusive luxury transport in Las Vegas. Man, I really appreciate you tuning in. I love giving you that promo right there because you come in the show, say hello, participate, 
And, uh, you know, I appreciate that's cool. That's what it's all about. So thank you for tuning in and saying hello. Thais is with us. Hey, what's up, Thais? Welcome back to the show. That's cool, man. Thanks for tuning in. Lee Jones is with us. Lee Jones. Hey, what's up? Uh, thanks for tuning in. I think that's the first time I've seen your name in here, too, Lee. And I want to say um, with Dealer Loads. Am I right? Dealer Loads? Let's see. We're going to talk. We got a uh, we got a phone meeting set up in a couple days. So listen, if you got something to talk about, if you got a company, product, service, uh, you know, just something you are dying to tell the folks about, and you want to get on the show, send me an email: autotransportintel at gmail .com. You can find me on Facebook and just send me a message. Let's hook it up. Second time here on the live. This is Eric Kennedy. Oh, okay, Eric, Big Blue Twelve B. All right, well, thanks, Eric. Thank you for tuning in. And thanks for uh, the station identification. That's cool. I hope you like the show, and I mean, I appreciate it. I really do. Michael S., hey, Marcus, I live in Las Vegas, too. I'm looking for work like a car hauler. Well, there you go. The network is working, man. So Michael and Marcus, awesome, dude. I hope that I uh, hope you guys can help each other out. Who's going to the conference? Me. I'm going to the conference. I will be there. I'm going to drink tea. I'm going to eat uh, European pancakes. And, um, and yeah, and talk about car hauling. Ants Transportation, hi, Jay, you are the best. That is really nice. I really appreciate that. You know, um, I don't, you know, I don't always think that everything is going 100%. I'm just like everybody else. So, you know, a little pat on the back and appreciation goes a long way. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, Darude1, what's up, Jay? Tuning in as always. I appreciate that. Thanks for tuning in and saying hello. I really means a lot. I appreciate that. Uh, Miguel Val, what's up, Miguel? You pulled over for the night. Awesome, just in time. I hope you got a parking space, and I hope that you know it wasn't a big hassle. I I, I think it's I think it's a shame that parking is like um, a much sought after and argued over commodity. That's crazy, man. Really parking? Who who saw that one coming? Somebody did. It's kind of like bottled water. Really? Bottled water? I mean, I got my ELD Kool-Aid, but... Oh, just in time. I really needed a drink right there. So, bottled water and parking. Who'd have known? Who'd have thought? Riccardi Creep Coyer, first time. Very good info. Wow, thank you. That is awesome, man. I really do appreciate it. Um, and, uh, and it, you know, I spent a lot of time putting the interviews together, getting the live panel, getting a topic, promoting the show. It does, it takes up a lot of time. And so it means a lot. So I'm glad that information is being received as opposed to just, um, I don't know, useless chit chat. Uh, Miguel says, I'm in a small gas station, only truck here. <laughs> That's awesome. What we need to do is we need to get you those Blues Brothers loudspeakers, and you could just pump out auto transport intel. Who's with me? Okay, all right, so that is the live chat, and there'll be more live chat coming in, and then we'll weave that into the show. But I think I'm right on target. Look at that. I am in the 20 minutes into the show. Let's do some industry news. Awesome. Now, industry news is, um, you know, it's kind of whatever, right? Um, I like to start out with memes, you know. You know what really grinds my gears? Nothing. I know how to shift properly. That's pretty funny. That's pretty funny meme. See, memes are, memes are good, man. Memes are good for the soul. I don't always take US-69 in Oklahoma, but when I do, I hit every red light from Big Cabin to Calera. It's pretty funny, man. Memes are awesome. Look! It's a stretched out Pete with a stainless steel spread axle reefer. Um, by the way, I shared this because does anybody does anybody else not understand the bird box challenge happening? I mean, it's relevant to our industry. Are people really blindfolding themselves and driving? Do they do that in the movie? So they do that in the movie. Do you have to do it in real life? Does is does Chucky really exist? Do people pretend that they're small wooden uh, marionettes and? Stab people? I don't do. Do people have to do everything now that's done in movies? I don't get it, man. I don't get it, especially when it has to do with cars. Like the the Kiki challenge, that was pretty dumb. But this, I don't get it, man. 
when you get paid by the hour. I, I mean, okay. I'm just going to leave that there. Uh, if it fits, it ships. And if it doesn't fit, as long as it hold, as long as it holds, it goes. And then if it doesn't, then I guess it doesn't go. I mean, don't you hate that? You know, um, it's that's the visual I've gotten on the phone as a dispatcher in the early days when I didn't properly know or check curb dement curb uh, dimensions of vehicles. That one's going to happen. You book too many long beds <coughs> or trucks, and that's going to happen. That's a shame. I don't know what you're going to do. <clears throat> I don't think we have flippers that are going to work. I don't think that's going to work. That's not going to fly. Hello, I'm here. Hurry up and unload me. I know, it's a freight joke, but still, it's, it's pretty funny. I was thinking it could say, like, um, here's Johnny. Okay. Uh, anyone on Central Dispatch and happy with it? I chose this. This was somebody shared this on Facebook, and I share, I'm sharing this because um, this is very relevant to tonight's topic, and it really it's it's relevant, like I usually, in car hauling, um, because you know the Central Dispatch. It's that double-edged sword. I mean, you hate it, you love it, you need it, you don't want it. What is it? Love it? Can't live without it? Can I find cars? <laughs> Ty says, can I find cars here? Garcia Transport checking in. Cool. Thanks, Manuel. Uh, and, oh, Dominic is with us. Dominic Satchel. What's going on, everyone? James Torrance. How can someone just get into trucking start car hauling? Well, James, let me tell you. You want it, You want What you want to do, check out ctsbusinesscoaching.com. Check that out. That's for you, James. ctsbusinesscoaching.com. Caught using cell phone or holding it while driving, $999 fine and a three-year suspended license as of January 2019. Ouch. Where's that at? I saw it on Facebook, but I didn't catch where. But, I mean, I know, like, these fines are going way up. And, you know, <clears throat> okay, yeah, it's, it's coming from a good place or a terrible place, either one. We know why this is happening. But, it, you know... At the same time, isn't like everything on your ELD? How do you, or in your maps? I don't know. Everything's on your, if, if your life's on your phone, but you can't touch your, I don't get it. I don't know. Someone, I'm, I don't know. Someone's going to have to explain it all to me. Um, and then there's this. I guess, I guess somebody got clipped at the truck stop. That's, <laughs> that's <laughs> pretty much the way that one goes. There you go. Signed, smiley, finger, finger. Thank you. And then that happens. You know, it's a family show. You know, you do know it's a family show. You realize that? Okay. All right, well, as long as you know that. That's a bummer. I don't know what you do. That's a bad one. Um, uh, oh, wheels have been chalked. Excellent. Great. Not going anywhere. Check. Check. Um, oh, and here's a text. Well, it's not a text. It's just, it's a screen capture from somebody's phone. I don't know why it's there. We don't know his name, LOL. But it seemed to me, I don't know if somebody got, like, this was part of the dispatch. I could see that. I could see that being part of the dispatch. I don't know. I don't know, but here we go. All right, so I think it was last week that I shared... Okay, this was on Facebook. You know, I normally redact stuff. I leave out names, etc. But this was so specific, and now, I think now we got a. I think we got a picture of the car. Although that was, that was Ready Auto. Oh, you know why I'm sharing this? Because I didn't have EJ's reply. Okay, so Roger says Montway screwed me, gave me an operable load when they said it was operable. I did my part, showed up, jumped the vehicle to start it. Sounded like a broken timing chain. I have no winch. That's why I don't do operables yet. So, 200 miles, deadheading for pickup, walked away with nothing. Montway left me out to dry, would not even compensate me for fuel. Low budget, in my honest opinion. Now listen, that's one of the problems, is that of all the companies that get bad-mouthed, 
behind the scenes in car hauling, this one comes up a lot for years now. And I mean, that's, I think almost anybody can independently verify that. And, and I hope it changes over time. I hope we can fix it. And I know I think Richard's in the Facebook groups and trying to help. And, you know, maybe there's room to grow. But it's, this sounds pretty recent. And what's, what's interesting is then EJ says, which I guess, I think EJ is a representative from Ready that it got dispatched through Montway. I don't have all the specifics. But EJ says, that's rude as hell. They knew I'd be down till Tuesday. Oh, I think he's at the he's at the lot. Right. Okay, so he's from the repo lot and he I guess he's saying the broker knew they knew he'd be down till Tuesday and the repo lot is a Tuesday, Thursday 10 to 2 pickup only. So good luck getting that car this week. And it's interesting I, what this is is this is another example where sometimes don't you wonder what does the broker do? If, if if I got to do all the detective work, what work did the broker do? Why are they getting 40%? Nah, that's not cut and dry. Listen, we could, we could make that argument about anybody at any point. But it does come up a lot. Like, if you're going to take 20, 30, 40% of what the car shipper's paying, you better do detective work and communicate it to all the parties involved. Otherwise... Yeah, you're gonna, you deserve to get trashed in social media, right? So anyways, here's an operable, here's your inoperable. And, um, yeah, there's your, there's your inop, operable. There's your operable inop. Um, and then this is a general sentiment. All right, here we go. Issued at shipper's request. Okay, are you guys ready? All right, I'm gonna try and read this. <clears throat> Received. Subject to individually determined rates or contracts agreed upon in writing between the carrier and shipper, if applicable, otherwise the rates, classifications, and rules that have been established by the carrier and are available to the shipper on request, which are in effect on the date of shipment, the property described on the face of this bill of lading, in apparent good order except as noted, contents and condition of contents of packages unknown, marked, consigned, and destined as indicated below, which, said carrier, the word carrier being understood throughout this contract as meaning any person or corporation in possession of the property under the contract, agrees to carry to its usual place of delivery at said destination if on its route, otherwise to deliver to another carrier on the route to said destination. And... Here's your graphic. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. You know, legal language is fun. Can be fun as long as it's not directed at you. Right? All right. Okay, so that has been industry news. Let's see. How are we doing on time? Hey, it's 8.30. Oh, man. Nailed it. 8.30. It's about time for our interview with Ron. Now, before I go to the interview with Ron, I am gonna I'm gonna talk for a minute about how do car haulers find loads, okay? Um, and by the way, I want to say this too. This truck, I pulled up this truck. I think this was shared by Brendan, um, by Brendan Powell. I think on, it was on Facebook. Great looking picture of a truck. I got some files there, so it's a little messy right around here in the middle part. But uh, pr beautiful truck, and it need guess what that truck needs? That truck needs loads. So we're going to talk about how do car haulers find loads. Now, looks like, uh, okay, man, we got some good stuff going on in there uh, in the live chat. Just checking out the live chat. So it looks like Ty's got that under control or not. Either way, it's good. Um, so, so where do where do car haulers find loads? How do car haulers find loads? Um, we we played a video. Me and Ty made a little video where Ty was talking about, um, you know, where are the loads? Um, are they you know are they on your app? Are they on your? I'm looking to see if that if that video's around here. I don't see it. I don't know where I put. I filed it somewhere. It's okay. Um, but you know, do you? Do you book loads off of... Oh, that takes us to the question of the day. Question of the day. 
How do car haulers find loads? Do you book loads off of load boards or do you go with a strategy of going straight to the customer where you're going to get a larger portion of a bigger uh, carrier pay? So those are those are two good things. If you go straight to the customer, not only is the carrier pay going to be higher, but you're going to get more of it in general. Or do you go with the load boards? You know, if you're a brand new car hauler, you may want to just eat off the load boards while you're learning how to build your business and get more efficient, right? What car hauler on day one can just walk into a dealership and try and st strike up a conversation? Some. Maybe some, or maybe you know somebody. Maybe you happen to know somebody in car hauling. But that's really what we're talking about is where do you get the loads? And the thing is, and then who do you think is going to help you get those loads? Are you going to rely solely on a dispatcher to build your business? You know, I make the analogy. Uh, let's say somebody sets up a store, right? Say you're a mom and pop shop and you're going to open up a hardware store. I think the mom and pop shop knows where they're going to get the hardware inventory before they actually set up the store and, and set up open for business. But that's not always the case in car hauling. You will meet people that bought a truck, bought a trailer, paid for insurance, got the MC authority, they're ready to go, and yet they haven't spent any time thinking about where... Do car haulers find loads? So that's a little strange, isn't it? I mean, this analogy can be, you know, brought up all over the place. I mean, maybe, maybe an accountant, maybe a CPA sets up an accounting business and doesn't have any prospective customers yet. They just, they got the calculator ready and stacks of papers and a thing full of pens and they got the nameplate and... And, you know, the place is painted real good, and all the windows are clean, and all the blinds are drawn, and, you know, the doorbell rings well, real well, and the phone is ready to go, and the coffee's hot, and the striped shirt, and the tie, and the haircut, and they're set, man. They're ready to go, and they just sit there at their desk, waiting for that first client, just dying for tax time to go crazy. Is that what they do? Is that how a CPA starts a business? I don't know. A lawyer? Does a lawyer do that? Right? They got their gavel. <laughs> the gavel lawyers don't have gavels. They got their law books and their law degrees. And they're just like, all right, I'm ready for that lawsuit. No. No, they don't do that. You know what they do? They chase ambulances. So you chase the ambulance. In car hauling, what's the ambulance? What is the ambulance in car hauling? How do you get the car shipping customers? Do you, do you get a car shipping calculator on your website and get leads? You could. Maybe that's not actually a bad idea. Of course, that opens up the whole, am I going to be able to service these leads problem? You know, guy in West Virginia, he's got a car that needs to go from like Florida to Oregon and you know, you're in Nashville. It's not gonna happen, probably not gonna be able to do that. I'm not gonna be able to handle that lead. What am I gonna do with that lead? I'm not a broker, I don't have a broker's license. Of course, it's a possible setup of a business model, but you know, where do you start? How do you get loads? How does a car hauler find loads? So that's what we're talking about tonight. And uh, let's see here. Check my screen. Okay, yeah, I got my fancy graphic there. All right. So I say it's time. I say we get this show on the road. Anybody else in the live chat? Um, is there anything I need to do? Anything I need to say? Uh, any more emails coming in? Any more um, anything going? Hey, how's the audio? How's the audio and the video, by the way? I think we're okay. Um, by the way, this is kind of cool. Is I've got a guy... Uh, I got a guy, uh, I got a guy in Australia trying to see if I can help him ship his car from Australia to the States. Um, and that's in the spring. So he's, he's planning far ahead, which is a good idea. So I knocked on a door and they knocked on another door and we've got a, uh, international overseas, uh, relocator involved and getting a, uh, bid. 
So maybe through that process, maybe I can get the overseas relocator on the show. That'd be pretty cool. And that's the way this works. That's how this network keeps building. Um, it is much bigger now than I had thought it was going to get. Um, and for anybody that thought that this show was going to focus on just a little slice, you know, just dispatching all day or maybe a specific product or service all day. No, it has really grown far beyond all the way to the edge of the room as far as what we're, who we're talking to and what we're talking about. So if you're not sure if this show is for you, um, I think that time has passed. I think this show is, if you're in car hauling and you want to learn car shipping, you want to watch Auto Transport Intel. Audio and video are great. All right, cool. Thank you. Thanks, Eric. I appreciate that. Okay, so let's. Um, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna run an ad here. Oh, by the way, you saw the. You saw, did you see the fancy graphic? Yeah, we'll we'll pull that up while we're in the. Uh, we did the industry news. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Let's do this, and I'm gonna bring in the first guest, and um, and let's do that. Let's do. Let's do this. What is Form 2290? Well, you know, if you drive a heavy highway vehicle that weighs 55,000 pounds or more on public highways, you're required to file Tax Form 2290 with the IRS. Every year, you can do the paper form, mail it in, don't mess with that. Get it done. Go to ati2290.com, ati2290.com. Now, when is Form 2290 due? Well, annual renewal of your Form 2290 for a new tax period must be completed by August 31st every year. And if you purchase and first use a vehicle in January, you must file Form 2290 by the end of February. Keep that in mind, know the rules, go to ati2290.com, just get it done, go to ati. 2290.com. What's a stamp schedule one? After filing your form 2290, you'll receive a stamped schedule one or proof of payment. You're going to want that. You're going to want to keep that on hand. Go to ati2290.com. ati2290.com. What are the penalties for failing to file IRS form 2290? Well, equal to four and a half percent of the total tax due assessed on a monthly basis up to five months and for late filers additional monthly payment equal to a half a percent of the total tax due and so i mean you don't want to mess around with this get it done make it easy go to ati2290.com that's ati2290.com get it done i'm jay at auto transport intel i hope this helps you Okay, cool. So, uh, let's see here. So, we are, and, let's see here. Okay, so we are, there we go. All right, so, um, we're going to have Ron join us here in a second. And while Ron is doing that, let's go ahead and uh, let's hear from Mark at Trucking Answers. Let's do that. What's going on, Jay? That's Jay, right? And we should mention that's Jay from Auto Transport Intel. Jay runs a live show on Tuesdays at 8 p.m. on YouTube. You should check it out. Jay does everything car hauling. That stuff I don't know anything about, but Jay knows everything about it. So if you want to haul cars, that seems like it'd be interesting, hauling all these different kind of cars like Ferraris and... Uh, Probably a bunch of used cars from auto auctions. Whatever it is, whatever makes the money, go check out Jay at 8 p.m. tomorrow on YouTube. I'm there too, right, watching uh, the show. So it's pretty fascinating. Two, three hours. He brings industry experts in and everything, right? So love it. Hey, thanks, Mark. I appreciate that. Um, and uh, Mark checked in earlier. So, yeah. So, again, if you want to... Um if you want to learn more about Mark, you just go go to YouTube, okay? And you're going to go to YouTube, and you're just going to type in, let that uh, resolve here. Da, 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 da. <laughs> right. 
Okay, and then type in trucking answers. Select it, and there you go. And then you're going to click on trucking answers, and it's going to take you to the show. And there you go, and there's trucking answers, trucking answers with Mark, and you can click on the videos, and you can see, man, he's doing great. You're doing great, Mark. This is really cool, man. So yeah, um, that is Mark at Trucking Answers. All right, cool. So I've got, I've still got. Uh, I'll tell you what, while I've got Ron joining the um, joining the video meeting here, let me check in on some of the live chat. Did anybody have a question, or actually, did anybody have an answer? To the question of the day, um, let's go back to uh, where do car haulers find loads? So you've got okay. Let's see, getting oh you're getting ready for a storm. Yeah, had an ugly broker dealing. I'm really trying to change my opinion, but it's not happening. Yeah, you know it, that's actually one, one of my goals. One of my hopes is that I can spread a little bit of cheer and um, hope and understanding between carriers and brokers. There is a lot of mistrust, miscommunication, and general dislike between those two, and they need each other. Um, it, it's, it was posited recently, do carriers even need brokers? Well, yeah, as a matter of fact, car shipping does need brokers. They do serve a purpose. It's kind of like lawyers, okay? We think that we don't need lawyers, and you don't. You don't want a lawyer, and then you need one. And when you need one, you really need one. So they serve a purpose. <laughs> I, just, I just drew an analogy between lawyers and brokers, but I had to find a way to have it make sense. Um, brokers, not only, are as good as lawyers, but... Um, Brokers help educate. Who's going to spend the time educating a, a car shipping customer? Does a carrier have time to educate and babysit a, a new car shipping customer? You know, that person just wringing their hands. Oh, what's going to happen to my baby on the road? What am I going to do? And how much is it going to cost? And can I can I put the dresser in the trunk? And, it, you know, what, I got to get to the airport. And what about my apple pie? And the neighbors and uh, who's going to do all that hand holding? The broker does that. Now, if you want to do that, and I mean, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't want to come down on, you know, I don't want to sound like negative Nancy or Debbie Downer or whatever fancy anagram nickname you want to come up with. But the fact is that there's a lot of hand holding and babysitting that goes on when it comes to people and their cars and their expectations and their assumptions and traffic and reality and imaginary dreams and and promises and guarantees. And that's the problem. Actually, that's the problem, is when a broker feeds into the, the beliefs and assumptions and expectations of an unrealistic car shipping customer, that's when it, everything starts to go to run amok. So if you're a broker... And you're telling people everything they want to hear and just ringing the register and keeping half of it. Yeah. Um, yeah, carriers are not going to like you very much. Uh, LOL, Jay, who costs you more money, a broker or a lawyer? <laughs> hey, actually, that's a good question. That is a very good question because there are going to be carriers that say, the broker costs me more than the lawyer because of the way the transaction went down. Give dispatchers some tips where you find loads besides central dispatch. Hey, now there that's a good point, Keenan. Well, okay, so you guys know that what I'm going to do, I'm going to direct you to a couple videos, and then I'm going to talk about those videos. And Ron, we're ready for you anytime, buddy. I am kidding. Okay, so what you want to do is go to go to YouTube, go to Auto Transport Intel, right? Just just always go there. Just go there constantly, every day, all day. You know, like share subscribe uh make sure you click the notification bell also and okay so here's what you want to do top five load boards there it is click top five load boards top five carling load boards all right 
This is one of my highest uh, grossing videos recently. Which, I mean, 5,000 views five, 000, five months ago, it's not, it's not, you know, totally crazy. But in car hauling, which is a super niche, it's not bad. If you write anything on your computer, you need to get Grammarly. I write pretty much all day, every day, and Grammarly makes my writing better. As a student... Hey, I'm just going to say this, that um, actually Grammarly is pretty sweet. Um, that is a sweet program. Uh, and so if you are writing, I'm just going to say this right now. Go ahead and get Grammarly. Go to just here. Do the check this out. Just go to Grammarly.com. Okay. And you set up an account. It's really easy. And if I type that, if I hit that, you're going to see my Grammarly stuff. And it saves it online. It's all for free. Great program. Yeah, Grammarly really does help you write better. Okay. Welcome to Auto Transport Intel. This is top. Okay, so top five car hauling load boards, all right? So you want to click on top five car hauling load boards, the video. And you want to watch this video. It's about seven minutes. Top five car hauling load boards in auto transport to right now. This is Atcom. So, all right, so I go through this. I go through, I actually give you six. I go through Central Dispatch, and then make sure you do Ready Logistics. And then you want to do Cars Arrive, Cars Arrive Network. And then you want to do United Road. And then you want to do Metrogistics. And then I throw in a bonus number six, which is Ship Dock Cars. All right. So, um, in fact, what was the, uh, what was it? Auto Transport, Auto Transport, what was the name of, um, Oh man, or Cognetics. Anyways, there are there are still there's there are other load boards you're gonna hear about, and they're and they're growing. They're smaller. They're they're flatlining. Whatever they're doing. Um, the problem with smaller load boards, and there's there are there's probably another ten or fifteen out there that you could you could check out, is they don't have enough loads posted for you to really spend a lot of time there. There. Now I will say this. Having said that, do um, you know that Car Shipio? He's got a marketplace, and I'm going to go ahead and say this now, because Stan said to me, hey, he, he contacted, Stan contacted me, he's like, hey, you know, what what are you uh, leaving me out for? I said, well, you know, I didn't I didn't do it on purpose. So you can go to carshipio.com, and you can actually, you can just create a free account, and you can check out the marketplace. Um, so carshipio, marketplace, and maybe that'd be number seven. And I know there's some other people out there creating Central Dispatch Junior and things like that, and that's fine and all. But really, for right now, if you are booking loads off load boards, listen, in freight, there's two or three, all right? DAT and Internet Truck Stop, but that's freight. In car hauling, 90-plus percent of all loads posted on load boards are posted on... Central Dispatch. Central Dispatch is the site you need, and that's why Central Dispatch is an ATM, and they're just, you know, they're just ringing the register. And I haven't seen an update in forever. I mean, I don't even know the last time. But the thing is that, and here's how you know, do, do all to all for 30 days, right? And go ahead and do highlighting, whatever you want to do, and and uh, show 500. Gosh, we wouldn't want to show more than 500 on a page. And we want to search it, all right? And then let the Commodore 64 ring the Atari and dial up modem and fax machine sound, please. Who can make me a fax machine sound? Wow. <laughs> Oh my gosh, this is a hundred and whatever bucks a month plus per carry. You know how much money they're making a month? I'm sorry, I mean grossing. You know how much money they're grossing a month for this thing? Wow, oh my gosh. Anyway, so there are 38,000 plus loads posted right now on the Commodore 64. And nobody even comes close to that. And until somebody does, 
It doesn't matter how often you got to change the fax machine ribbon. Central Dispatch is where you are going to get your leftovers. <coughs> I'm sorry, I mean loads. So you go up there, you get your leftovers, you stand in the buffet line, and you move your tray down the to the the metal, and you you know your you got your milk is falling over, and you're you're dying for some chicken fried steak, and everybody's gathered at the end of the line. Just waiting for the cafeteria workers to come out and just put that one bowl of red jello out. All right, now everybody's standing around looking at each other, pretending they're on their phone or whatever. And here comes the lady, and it's just one little bowl of jello. And everybody scrambles and dies, and there's steak going everywhere, and chicken legs, and gravy. And you didn't get the red jello. Now, what do you do? Is that that's your business strategy? That's pretty good. Yeah, that's that's really good. Wow. Impressive. Um so anyways, that's but that's that's the reality. That's where you're at today. That's right. In 2019, that's still how it works, which is awesome. I mean, that's really, you know, you've got flying cars and then you've got red jello cafeteria workers side by side in 2019. Uh, it's unbelievable. It really is. Which is why you'll find companies making Central Dispatch Junior and, uh, you know, Baby Atari and Super Nintendo 64 Mini and, you know, whatever. Everybody's clamoring to figure out how in the world can we make this better? Is there any way to ultimately penetrate this market? I mean, get, are you kidding? You, nobody can Nobody can beat the Commodore 64? It, yeah, it's it's like being at an arcade in uh and we're trapped in the 50s elvis is still on the jukebox and you know the guy with the sony walkman ghetto blaster is still skateboarding and you know and pop locking and <laughs> it's amazing oh my gosh it cracks me up so anyways hey ron listen man i am uh I, I'm, I'm having a blast, actually, but um, if you're out there in TV land, you want to uh, you want to call in, I'm going to send you another, um, I'm going to send you another invite. Let's do that. Let's try it again. Let's do this. Let's do the Gmail. And I know it, sometimes with the meeting IDs, um, it gets a bit... Uh, uh, what am I trying? With the meeting IDs, sometimes you can miscommunicate. It's like a broker and a carrier. It's a miscommunication. So we're going to try it again. Uh, let's go traffic. Okay. I'm going to send you a Zoom meeting. And it's got a phone number on there, Ron. You can call or you can click and join. But one way or the other, um, we want to uh, we want to do this call because i got to get to my live panel here shortly. So let's see what happens. Otherwise, we got that. Pa we do have that live panel coming up. And you know what? You know what's cool is that uh, I got you guys with me in the live chat. And uh, what do we got? Cody Martinez. <laughs> what's going on in the live chat? I know I got a little crazy with. It. I, well, I like the cafe. I really like making. making <laughs> I like making the cafeteria analogy with Central Dispatch. Because, you know, I, I said once on my, on CTS, you go to ctsbusinesscoaching.com, you can read this. Um, if you're going to open a nice fancy restaurant, let's say you're going to be in, you're in, you're in Southern California, you're going to be on Rodeo Drive, you want all the high-end clients and the Maseratis and the, and the Velvet Ropes and the, the Hilton sisters and the Kardashians. You want everybody coming in and, and throwing giant, making it rain and all over the place. And it's all awesome, right? And then, you know what you do? When, it, when you open the doors and the, and the chefs are ready, you run out back. You open the, you open the back door. And then the, 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 the smell from the alley just is like, woo, it overtakes you. And you're like, that's right, I'm going to get through it. And, and, you, and you know where you get your ingredients? You, you just go dumpster diving, right? You just jump in the dumpster, just dive right in the dumpster to get your ingredients for the fine cuisines that you're going to sell to the Kardashians. Because that is what you're doing. 
if you are 100% booking off of Central Dispatch. That's what you're doing. Because those are the leftovers, man. The load got to Central. The Central Dumpster. The load got there because... It didn't fit on one of our full load trucks or we just we, we went through our, our carrier Rolodex and everybody's booked and he's got the flu and that guy's got to go to his kid's graduation and oh and he's in Aruba and you know and, and he's down at the VA this week and oh he's got bowling league he can't do it well you know what we're gonna do we're just we're gonna post it on central dispatch we're just gonna give up in life Ah, I don't know what to do. Really? You don't know what to do? Uh, I know what to do. Uh, wheel it out to the central dispatch and just... And you know what? Let's do this. I got a great idea. We're going to wheel it out to the dumpster and let's just... Let's just lowball it. Let's just... Put, top, let's go crazy. Let's post it so low, people would have to be nuts to take this thing. Because who cares? I mean, you know, we already moved 100. We got one left. All right, let's just stick it... Throw it up on Central. Let's post some kind of spin the wheel. Just I don't know. Let's do that. Let's do the bird box challenge and just post it on Central. And somebody books it. Like everyone's like, yeah, totally, man. We moved that load. High five. We're all millionaires. We're gonna go party with the Hilton sisters and the Kardashians. And we're gonna go to that restaurant where they serve fine cuisine out of a dumpster, just like we did with that load. So, and there you go. That's how it works. So, welcome to the strategy. Now, I know that that's not exactly, now we're dumpster diving. <laughs> that's not, I, I, I'm sorry, all right, I want to say this too, is that I realize for dramatic purposes only, um, I made these wild analogies and allegedly compared very high-end and important and, um, loving uh corporate entities that really are as good as people if not better and um hold the entire industry in such high regard that they milk it like crazy i realize that that is not only a possibility but a likelihood and that it's completely unfair that i you know shoot from the hip so wildly and irresponsibly that um that it, it's just there's no penance that i could make but 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 there's truth in it, too. That's what's so crazy. There's a lot of truth in this. And everybody knows this. Well, I, I, I beg you to find somebody in this industry that doesn't work at said company that doesn't feel this way. Everybody feels this way. Uh, it's crazy. It is so weird. It's opposite day. It's literally opposite day. And everybody crawls back. I know this because I, I was dispatching loads. And I'm, I'm not dispatching right now. And that's why I actually, I, my sense of humor is back. I think my sense of smell is back. I can actually taste things again because I'm not chained to my desk and crawling through the broken dumpster glass to try and claw my way through another load full of nasty... Okay. All right, let's go. <laughs> but I mean, it's really, really tough to maintain a positive attitude when you are dumpster diving all day and just you you're being lied to or you're getting you're getting you're getting uh, uh, unrewarding garbage that you have to do all the detective work you get half the money and it's never going to even be a repeat customer and you know what I love too and I put this in my dispatcher training you got it man if you want if you like comedy check out my dispatcher training series because uh you'll get like you know hey can you do me a favor i'll totally get you on the next one you know it's a sweet old lady she used to be a marine she was on seal team six and you know she lost both of her legs she lost three legs and she's been through Agent Orange, Agent Red, Agent Yellow. She was in all those Vietnam Wars. And I mean, just the greatest lady. Can you please, can you do it for 50 bucks less? Right? Actual pickup, actual delivery is a good 100 miles off. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. <laughs> I mean, it's just crazy. It is crazy every day and you're like can i just get 
Can, I mean, can I just... I realize I can't get another 100, and I know I can't get another 50. If I could just... Can I supersize it? Can I just get an extra five nuggets? Can I can I get the Happy Meal toy? You know, the Happy Meal fry is really small. Can I just get... Can I get a regular fry or a large fry? Or can I just upgrade from just water? You know, I hate just getting water. Can I get soda? Please, I mean, you know, we'll just we will take care of your soft top Hellcat Porsche, guaranteed delivery at two thirty five, so the customer can make it to the hairdresser, and just you know all that. I just I just want to upgrade to a uh, super sized Big Mac, just this once. So there you go, man. That is what it's like booking off the dumpster. Um, so, all right, man, well, listen, we're going to go into, I am going to end this meeting, and, um, really, that was, that was, <laughs> that was way fun, uh, talking, I love, I love reminiscing about dispatching, you know, one of my ideas a long time ago was to kind of do a crazy dispatching show, um, and, well, I'm doing that now, except I'm doing it under the guise of actual information. Uh, no, which is that's not true either. I, I like to I like to make jokes. There's a lot of information on the show. We're gonna get into some information, so let's do that. Let's do this. I'm gonna run. Um, I'm gonna run this ad, and uh, let's do let's do this. Some to some degree, from here start. Car is born. A car is born. The life of a car. The life of a car. We've somehow, through 20 plus years combined experience, have a pretty decent understanding of what a car does from the time it's, we call born, out of the manufacturer, to the dealer, to the consumer. And I know what you're thinking too, is that, because I've thought it as well, standing in an <clears throat> auto auction, listening to Ty talk to another transporter, a real veteran with a fleet of trucks. You know, who who are these guys? What do they actually know? Well, what's cool is between the two of us, between the on the phone and the in-person at these locations, we really do know how to talk to the different parts of this ecosystem. We pride ourselves on that. Which is a lot. That's why we're talking to you now. We're, we're, we're telling you that we can help you talk to the other parts of this industry yeah, and understand it. And you know, we get a lot of people on our show, or Jay's show, ATI, uh, you know, hey, I just want a dispatcher. So I've got a guy right now. I tried to tell him, if you want to improve your business, coaching's the way to go. He says, I don't want coaching, I want a dispatcher. I just want a dispatcher. Okay, I'll get you a dispatcher, but that is not what you need. You know what I tell people, Jay? You say, why don't you sell your truck and trailer and go get a job at a transport company? That's what they do for a living. Maybe you do. Actually, you could use a dispatcher. You could use an accountant, but you wouldn't hire an accountant to fix your business. I don't think you'd hire an accountant to go load your cars. A car shipping customer doesn't need a broker. They need a carrier. Now, maybe they need a broker to help them find a carrier. Maybe they need a lead generator to help them find a broker to help them find a carrier. But they need a carrier. I mean, everybody needs a carrier. And a car hauler needs a business strategy. I agree. Yeah. And the dispatcher doesn't do strategy. They do finding a car, connecting it to your route strategy. Lane. That's that is stra but that's not core improve your business strategy. Yeah. So a lot of times where we're going with this, or at least where I'm going with this, is when people say, Look, I just need a dispatcher, I hear that as I'm going broke. And I need somebody to give me cars, please. And usually there's not a please at the end. It's usually pretty tense when people ask for a dispatcher. I need a dispatcher right now. 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 You know why you need it now? Because you need money right now. You need money right now. What you might need is a payday loan. That, if you're at that position in life, uh, you should probably... No calls. I was muted. I really think that... Because you're, really yeah. you're in a situation where the dispatcher... The dispatcher can delay the inevitable. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe make it come a little quicker, too. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's 
that's that's the that's the real kicker. Right, and that's this, the real kicker right there, guys. It's no laughing matter, but <clears throat> when you need somebody to talk to, you need a mentor, an advisor. You might need a coach. Yeah. And the, the beautiful part, and we've said this a lot, we, we don't have all the answers. We don't, really don't. don't. So why are we telling you to call us? Because we have more answers than you might. Well, not only that, and one of the things that I really take a lot of pride in, and I know Jay does, is we have a lot of connections. We know a lot of people. A lot. Sometimes networking. How do you network, right? You know, we're building it. We are building a network. Through CTS and ATI. ATI is building a network of, I would call it, real people that really care. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, so, I like that comment. We got, uh, let's see. We got, Jay looks stiff. (laughs) I think that was the... (laughs) <laughs> it took me a minute to figure out who that was sitting there. Who is that? Well, it's funny because we had just um let me do this. Ty and I had just done a um uh kind of an executive level coaching and um and so we were we were shooting some video and uh um yeah, just kind of continuing the conversation and I, I think what I think we'll do is we'll probably just keep doing, we'll just keep making video, um, and improving the process. So that's what we're that's what we're gonna do. It seems to be getting better every time, so it's working. Yeah, man. Thank you. Yeah. Well, and you know that's the thing, and that's like when I started this show. Well, yeah, I've told you guys. I mean, this is this is twenty five years in the making for me, um, and so every time I do a show. I learn something else, or, or you know, and an, an another accident happens that, or realize, oh, okay, I need to do that, or keep an eye on that. So um, the more, and everybody knows this, the the more times you record yourself, or make video, or make audio, or or flip your motorcycle, you just get better at it, you know, over time. So, uh, so I just keep flipping my motorcycle. There you go. There you go. So I've got, um, we are missing uh, Paul. Paul will be joining us from uh, Max Premier Transport Service. But I want to I want to welcome you guys to the show. Listen, in the upper left corner, we've got Dave at Clarksville Trucking. You guys know Dave. Yeah, Ty's you, got horns. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> Ty's, Ty's, Ty's big ears. <laughs> Ty's got horns and ears. It's getting serious tonight, gang. Hey. I'm just gonna lock some horns. That's right. Look and at it right there. It looks like a Snapchat uh, filter. Oh, oh, yeah, Snapchat filter. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys know that's that's Ty at CTS. That's my business partner, Ty. And, of course, I'm Jay. And, uh, hey, Dave, I like the T-shirt in the background. That looks awesome. And my buddy gave me that. Yeah, that's right. Dude, you still have one of the few T-shirts in circulation. What's wrong with these people? Aren't you selling them? Well, no, I'm, I I fell off the uh, merchandising wagon. Um, oh, I just there's so much to do, and I just have not had time to. But I, I'm working on. I am work. It's on my. It's it's on my to do soon list. Y'all too busy busting them load boards, ain't you? Oh <laughs> man, you know it. Well, that's too much fun, number one. And, I mean, and people really, I tell you what, the more the more I bust on load boards, the higher the ratings go. You know? Yeah. Because, I mean, Whatever works. well, everybody, everybody feels the same way about it. That you, that's the thing is that the more you stare at load boards, the worse you feel. It's kind of like, um, it's kind of yeah. like, it's like carbon monoxide. I don't stare at them. I type in what I want, and I hit search. If nothing pops up, I set it down and go watch TV or build something or start a fire. Exactly. You know what? You know what I do a lot of is um, I like to try and play video games to blow off steam. <coughs> you know, or like um, online poker. You know, just something to, to. I like to play spades. Right. All right. Spades plus. There you go. 
I mean, I, I knew a guy, one of the dispatchers I worked with, he would watch movies to help keep his circulation and sanity. <laughs> Which is, I, it's a pretty good idea. You got to have something. One Mr. thing about looking at load boards, the, you, you new people that aren't used to looking at load boards, is before you start looking at the load board, you got to know what you want. You got to know where you want to go and how you're going to get there. Or else don't even look at it. Because you just stare at it and stare at it and stare at it and then you stare at it some more. So this is how I do a load board. I'll go in and I'll sit down and I'll click Tennessee to all. And I'll search minimum of four, maximum of four. I like the and way you hit, said that. And then hit go. And usually I get anywhere between 23 and 13 hits. Well, I find the best looking load. Do that, Jay. Go Tennessee to all. That's right. Let's, do, let's just go ahead and do this, man. And then when I say, oh, there's four going to Georgia, well, I'll open another screen, and then I'll go Georgia, four going to Tennessee. And um, right. Well, I usually two minimum, maximum of four. I call that reverse cones. Right? So you got you got Nashville to all. So there's the there's your spray. And then you got the reverse cone, Georgia back to, and you, and you hope that within that spray, it's kind of like when you water the lawn and you set up the sprinklers. You hope that between all the sprinklers, you water the full the whole lawn. Yeah. So it's, car hauling's just like watering grass. Pretty much, yeah. You stand there long enough, your damn feet are gonna get wet. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so so we're gonna do Nashville, right? Tennessee. Oh, we're going to do Tennessee. Okay. Yeah. And that's another thing is that what's interesting is, uh, do you do city or do you do state? And um, that's actually could be your third sprinkler. So you could do city out and then out back to city and then do another one where you do the whole state so that you can see some of that. And I know like you can do, you know, you can do this multi-city search, but I, I just don't really like that. This is more go like where you would go where you was headed first. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. You're getting you're getting sidetracked. I know. Well <laughs> I got excited. All right. So You gotta uh, get the leftovers first. Ten man. Tennessee to what do we want? All. Tennessee to all. All right. Yeah. Minimum of four, maximum of four. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. right. Right. That's how Ready you're gonna, in five that, days. That's how you're gonna keep this under control. Right. Because that's all I want. I just want four. Yeah. Five won't help me. Eight will help me if they're going to the right spot. We've done eight a lot, remember? We'll we'll haul, haul four and then bring four back and get four more to go. Which and that's where relationships come in again because if you're going to book eight and split them, there's going to be a pretty please or sugar on top somewhere in there. Drop that to ten days. Really? Okay. Yeah, five or ten. Okay. Because when I get on the load board, I'm ready to go. Right. I ain't searching for next month. I bet there's 13 to fax 27. Machine. I want the fax machine noise. Five. I wonder See, there's, I there's four pickups going to Huntsville for $650. I could be in Huntsville in two and a half hours. Yeah, but they're four pickups. You can't do that. Yeah, but I'm fixing to fix that. I got a sub country on the way. Oh, wow. Nice. Those, right there, go down one hey, those to are, Lebanon. Those, that, those will be Lebanon good. to Glasgow, Kentucky. You know, there was a thousand dollar one somewhere. Go up a little bit. Yeah, my screen's jumping around. It, right there. Okay. Hey, by the way, this is very interesting. TQL total quality total quality logistics in the freight world. You hear really bad stuff about this company. Oh, I'm just saying. It's good to know that. Yeah. And I don't know if it's well. Is this a low ball? Listen, wait. Dollar thirty four a mile. Right, that's per vehicle. Okay, so you're okay there. All right, good. Uh, let's yeah, see. it's only going one hundred twenty one miles. So see? three F one fifties in a Ranger. Yeah, you could pull that off on a Sun Country, couldn't you? Oh yeah, easy. Um. Okay, we've we've determined that Savannah is not all it's cracked up to be. You can get out of there, but it takes time. 
See, there's four paying 96 cents a mile right there to Glasgow. But I tell you what, these are new. That actually, they're making good money on this one. Yeah. For four, for new F-250s. Yeah, so that's it's, not enough money, it's, though, it, but it, it's a good it's, load. It's, well, it's, in, it, but that's, and that's what's interesting. It's very interesting you said that. It's not enough money, but it's a good load. Both statements yeah, are only, true, right? You can move off four of them. If you had to do it two at a time, you could do them off four in one day. But it, if the problem, no. this is where you get into, this is that this is actually, I've seen this come up on some of the other Facebook groups, is that even if it's a, even if it seems like a good deal to you, is it still worth it? What if you found out that, that the shipper is paying three bucks a mile and you're getting a dollar? Are you can't worry about that? Right. Well, <laughs> it's so interesting. This is all part of the philosophy. I know, right? You can't worry about that. Some things you can, some things you can't. It is very interesting. Okay, three escapes in an F-350. Yeah, 127 miles. That's a that's a $650 day you go home. So how does this company, Total Quality Logistics, get these brand new car deals and have six ratings and an 83%? What is going on here? I, those cars right there are actually coming from United Road. I bet they're sub-listing them from United Road because, see, I get these emails. That's coming out of the train yard in Nashville. Is exactly, that's the railhead is where that's at because that's where all the new ports come out of. And that's like, I don't need a dispatch. I can go to the trail, the railhead there every day and load my tr truck as heavy as I want it to be loaded and then go. Um, uh, bad apples, that's Bill. He's saying that, he's, he's verifying that TQL is um, interesting. There is well, some, they only got an eighty-three percent rating and six reviews. That's not a good sign. It's not, and plus, I mean, and this this is actually this would be another reflection of me spending too much time learning and talking about freight might actually be paying off because it's it's helpful to know this stuff. And I I think as we move into the future, well, the, we're already here. It's twenty nineteen. We're going to be robots like tomorrow. Um, is that Uber, Amazon, Convoy, these companies are going to get into car hauling. These are companies we may not have really heard of in car hauling yet, but. Yeah, I'm looking here. Uh, and, and here we are. We're on Central Dispatch. How does that, how does that grab you, Ty? Right by the knackers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. See, here's, here's how you get your notes, too. Can I share my screen with you? Yeah, here. So I, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stop my share, and then you start your share. i got to pick the right screen. I don't want to throw my porn up there. Exactly. See? It's not that kind of show. Can you see that screen? Not yet. Oh, i got to click this button right here. There you go. Can you see that screen now? It's coming up. See, now, after you're on the load, load boards for a little while and you get to hauling for some people, these are the loads that you were just looking at right here. These are the Ford, road, the Ford loads coming out of that rail yard. I can't see it. Right yet. I can't see it yet. It says Dave has started screen sharing, but I don't see anything yet. It's weird, huh? I don't know what to do to make it any quicker. Why don't you hit stop uh, share and then try and redo it again? It's my guess. All right, let me find so Let me find stop. Stop is a red button at the bottom of your screen. If you highlight, stop will pop up. Hold on, I got to break everybody down here. It's all right. It's all good. Dude, uh, let's see here. Double and triple broker their stuff, but legally. How interesting. Keenan says, I deal with TQL and freight. Also, it is according to the broker. 
Sergeant Shill says, I'm a dispatcher. If you need my services, text me your email. Hey, that's pretty cool. <clears throat> oh, Dan oh, Danny's saying that too, Sergeant. Yeah, listen, guys. And if you're in the live chat and you can benefit from somebody else in the live chat or, you know, maybe after the show, maybe somebody will reply below the video. Um, whatever. I, I want you to, uh, I want you to be able to use the show and community okay. to your advantage. So that's awesome. Stop share. Okay. All so right. we saw it. Yeah, we saw, okay. So what, hit share again. Cause something popped up there at the last, uh, at the end there. There we go. We got it. All right. So we got, Can you see that. Screen? Yeah. We see some Chattanooga in your Gmail from United. Yeah, Road. See, this is, I get these emails and I'm sure most of you car haulers do. This is the Ford yard right here. This is the order miles at the bottom far right over here. And this is what they pay. 112 miles paying 95, 66 a piece. And all of these are ready for pickup. Most of them are trucks. Uh, here's escape escape going to, uh, where were those cars going? You looked at a few minutes ago. Uh, destinations, Alabama. Here's a bunch of them going to Alabama. All the F-150s you can haul right here going to Alabama. You're right. Uh, man. You're, you are right. Well, okay, now wait a minute. Now wait a minute. Is TQL posting the exact same loads? Yeah, they're subcontracting them. Well, or are they a competitor? Are they a direct competitor of United Road? Uh, not at that kind of rating. They're not. <laughs> well, what I'm saying is, to me, it's more likely that United Road is not involved if you book it through TQL. Yeah, see, here's a bunch going from Nashville to Chattanooga. What do you guys think hey. out there? Hey, what do you guys think? Let me just ask the, uh, what do you guys think? Live chat or comment, do you think TQL and United Road are working together, or do you think it's two separate brokers, same load? Are we going to say time? You know, United Roads figured out nobody will move anything for them because they make it too hard to get paid. So they probably brokered this out, subcontracted, whatever you want to call it, to whoever this other company is because United Roads sucks so bad. You're right. Yeah. Woo! See, because they email me every single day. Uh, oh, man. There's so many cars out there. Just right here. They bought out a fleet car. And, you, a fit, and you, know, you know it ain't good. If TQL is getting trashed through the freight world and they're jumping over to the car hauling side to help United Road. So here's my point. Woo. How long have we been doing this now? At least five minutes? Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. We haven't found a car yet. Correct. <laughs> oh, you have. All you got to do is drive down there and load them up. <laughs> yeah. Are we finding cars? Is that what we're doing? Yeah, because the cars, yeah. where do cars exist? Yeah. We just passed up a whole bunch of them. Yeah, you can we put five S250s on your rig. Any of those loads on the Central Dispatch, I would have went and got, except for that one that I could go get from the rail yard myself. Well, hmm. and you know what? It's during that search that, <clears throat> as, based on what I saw, um... I would say that's when I would open it up, start looking north as well, right? Like, man, is oh, it, yeah. like... I would get my phone out and search local car dealers and randomly call them and ask me if they're going to the auction tomorrow. I'd rather do that than try to put all this stuff together, family show. Uh, <laughs> because I'm telling you, you might be able to find all that and you got it. Now let's start making phone calls and see how easy it is to just pick it up and go. Yeah, but you got to start somewhere, though. I mean. Okay, Shaggy. Check it out. Now, Shaggy, and I agree with you. Listen, somebody said Shaggy should be on the panel right now. And I'll tell well, you come what. Come I, 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 Let me tell you. Shaggy, you better get ready for an email because if, if Paul, listen, and Paul's a driver. Paul might be busy. I know he was working today, and he hauls exotic cars, and he may have gotten caught up on a delivery or a pickup. So if, if Paul can't join us tonight, He'll, he'll be in the panel on another night. And I mean, listen, Anthony, if you're ready, man, I might pull you into this panel here because Anthony, Shaggy's consulting, um, it, he's saying the TQL is not working with United Road. 
And Probably that, not. And that TQL is double brokering. I believe TQL is brokering separately from United Road. That's what. But I. But I agree with what you said, Ty. Is I could easily see United Road nudging TQL because nobody wants to. But you know what? United Road is not going to be on board with believing that nobody wants to deal with them. They don't believe that. Could be a spot buy too. And I don't know exactly what that means, but somehow spot there's more than, more than United Road can handle, and so they spot buy something weird like that. Spot I'm not buy. in the new I'm not sure I know what the answer is. But you know what's cool, and, it, and there's a lot of chat right now about TQL. This is the kind of company that if this was trucking business freedom, there would be more freight haulers, as there are now, talking about TQL. And I got to tell you, this is exactly why I think talking about freight and car hauling side by side is a good idea. Because then we can really understand more about our industry. Great information going on here. And Andy's Andy562 is jumping in there, too, talking about TQL. Fascinating, dude. You know, what I want to do is what I'm curious of. Where else are we going to see TQL? Let me do, let's do this. Let's do something fun. You guys want to do something fun? Let's see if this works. The, TQL going to pay you? Uh, no. Uh, no. No, they're not. But they're invited on the show. In fact, I would love to have TQL on the show. <laughs> to dis- we'll eat their lunch. Uh, well, yeah, maybe, but probably not. <laughs> Corporate, yeah. hey, corporations are people too. According, yeah. according to the, I think it's the, that's well, not the Constitution. I don't think Thomas Jefferson wrote that. But you go into Central Dispatch, and we're gonna we're gonna do TQL. Let's see if I can get TQL loads. Oh wait, I didn't do that right. Hang on. Do you guys know how to do this search? Hey, there's Paul. What's up, Paul? I can see you. Well, I heard he was about to get cut. Yeah, he, man. I'm back out, I'm back. <laughs> Paul's like, what? I, I, I really want to get that fax machine sound. I need to get that. Let's see here. Let, if I, let's, let's Google. Bear with me, guys. Fax machine sound. And every time I do a central dispatch search... I am going to pretend that I'm listening to the fax machine sound. Here we go. Is this it? Yeah, this has got to be it. Is that what you was looking for? Yeah. Where'd you get that? Same place you got it. <laughs> so next time that's what yeah when i do a central dispatch search <laughs> oh you gotta love that shit. man cox automotive is gonna love episode 68 hey so come on let's keep going here i want to see dave get put his load together yeah me too okay so we got it's killing me man i mean it's taking way too much damn time to find four cars to go one place uh, uh, we haven't seen the cars. I would have been gone with that load. No. Drop it like it's hot. Yeah, I would have been gone a long time ago. Especially if a dispatcher gave it to you, then you'd really be gone. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you guys. All right, so here's a, I want to see if, okay, I want to try and see TQL. Okay, so let's search for company. See, there we go. I hate this. Top quality logistics. Total. I mean, I hate this. Uh, total quality why okay here we go here we go las vegas here we go did i get it okay let's do this are we sure it's the same company that everybody's not sure about well by the way that's a good question is tql here's a question for you guys is tql based out of las vegas if it is it's them oh here we go here's all the tql load loads on the board so this is where we can find out where they got their okay so they got a contract in billings well so to speak they have a arrangement in billings and they have an arrangement in nashville and those are their only two arrangements as of right now 
If they'll pay, though, that Nashville load, that's easy money, man. I can beat a Huntsville and back before lunchtime. So you got – they work Monday through Friday. This they pay? I bet it, I bet it is 30-day pay or more. That's just a guess, allegedly. What's that one at the top? Uh, Billings, Montana. Three thirteen a mile. Yeah, because it goes thirty-two miles. Oh, I see it. Okay, that's a tow yard three. contract right there. What TQL doing cars now? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I I'm surprised at TQL's listing cars. Oh, here we go. Alex, Alexander Colado says he got burned by TQL hauling containers out of Newark, New Jersey. <coughs> Horrible company. I think Mark at Trucking Answers lists them as like the number one crap company. I think. <laughs> Where does Paul find his cars? Yeah. His, his number one crap company last was Western. Oh, was it? Yeah. They only pay like 34 cents a mile. Hey, Paul, what's going on, buddy? Can you hear us? Okay. Yeah, you hear yeah, there we go. How you doing? I'm good. I'm a, I'm awake. I'm on the show. What's up? How how's everybody? Hey, what's up? <laughs> All right, so we look. Where where hey, where is, hey, where is everybody? Dave, right Dave Dave's in Nashville. Ty is in Kansas City area, and Paul, you're in Florida, right? Yeah, I'm in Orlando. Awesome. Yeah, love it down here. Warm. Yeah, looks. You were outside earlier, so would you just deliver a car? Yeah, I brought a new McLaren 600 LT down the 2019 long tail. Nice car. They've got like six inch exhaust it comes right out behind the driver's head sounds amazing you get a chance to <laughs> drive the new mclarens <laughs> wow so so ty asked the question ty what's your question where do you find cars paul uh well i started out with the load board scrambling like everybody does when they start out pretty much unless they're lucky and i've just built my clients over time um I hang out at Virginia International Raceway. I used to be a former, I was part of race control for VIR. So if you know, like in clothes hauling, a lot of these club guys, um, you know, they all hang out at the racetrack. So I've been working on building clients there. So I had a few contacts coming in um, and I'm just building and working my clients when I, when I, when it works for me and working off the load board, putting good loads together, take it's not easy. But uh, you know, that's where I'm at. We're doing good. And, and you're doing both. You're using the load boards to fill in the spots left open from the customers that you have. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I mean, it, you know, clients can be difficult because you got to take care of them. That's right. So, that's right. Yeah. You yeah. nailed it. Yeah, they, yeah, they can be difficult because they want you to go over here and they want you to go over there, but you're on the other side of the country. And they Sometimes. want you right now. Right. So, I mean, maybe if I, if I had a bunch of trucks, you know, clients would be a lot easier if I had, had a fleet of trucks or something, but I'm just a guy with a pickup truck. So, you know, I'm just one guy, one truck. Bingo. Yeah. So, I mean, I, other than that, I, I kind of got lucky early on. I met this guy. His name's Alan Wagner. Great guy. He used to be uh, part of Hertz Rental Company. He started rent rec And he's got me some leads, you know, and kind of helped mentor me in my business. That's got me a few calls. And, you know, lately... I've got a good relationship with um, McLaren right now, some of the McLaren dealers. And, you know, once you get a reputation for hauling cars for people like that, it kind of helps. You know, that's kind of accelerated my, my ability to get more cars. But, you know, like the crazy thing is, you know, um, 
Mike Ward out of Denver offered, you know, like right now I'm in Florida. It's always tough to get out of Florida. He actually offered to buy a car if I needed to haul one out of Florida. <laughs> I was like, you know, <clears throat> that was pretty floored with that one. Um, you know, when, when dealerships start offering to buy vehicles to make sure you got cars to haul. So two questions here. First one, Paul, what, what load yeah. board do you use? And Grant says, where are the cars at in Florida? He's been here a day now. Yeah. The cars in Florida are horrible. Let me, I tell you, man, you really kind of have to, um, you got to watch the load board. I, I'm hauling off central. I don't do, I'm kind of weird because I've refused to do any of the any other load board than central. Like I don't sign up for anything too complicated. I don't use um, third party bill of lading. So there's a, a lot of people I don't work with because I refuse to be off of my systems. Like you know, like I well I use um, you know I don't I don't use third party BOL. So in a sense I don't. There's a lot of load boards I don't I don't get on. So. Right now, there's 251 results coming out of Florida. Are you seeing? Is that for everything, or I mean, because I just yeah, I mean, I'll haul and I'll haul open cars out of Florida if I got to. Yeah, that's a boo coodle of them. You want me to share the screen with you? Yeah, sure. You know, there's some good stuff that comes out of Florida though. But like like yesterday, I was refreshing the load board, refreshing the load board all day, and you see that? um. Not yet. Keep going. You're so yeah. Not so yet. Do you you just refresh, 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 refresh? You got to. I mean, I almost had a golf cart out of here yesterday for nineteen hundred dollars going towards Denver, which works with my next client that I'm doing. Um, Try again, Dave. Stop and okay. start. You know the good ones get gone in three minutes or less oh, if you don't see them. Right it's away. over. Yeah. No. And, and, and listen, getting out of Florida, I mean, has always been pretty competitive. You see that? Yeah, thank you. Right yeah. here in Jacksonville, there's four cars going from Jacksonville to Birmingham for 1100 bucks. So there's JMN. Now, I bet you're not signed up with JMN. I think I am. No. Yeah, but you are, Dave. I think you are. And that's the thing is, yeah. now... I mean, Paul specializes in enclosed, and um, plus yours is a two-car trailer, right, Paul? Yeah, I mean, it's only 28 Smart. feet. Uh, I've, I've only got 344 inches of room for cargo combined, so. Because if you, if, you know, I think if you're, a, if you're a four, if you're even a three-car, you got to, oh, I think you can't, I don't think you can be as choosy about third party BOLs and all that. Right? 23 cents a mile for an enclosed. But that's bullshit. But, I, oh. but I, hey, no, I'm kidding. Uh, it's totally true, man. Listen, th it's that kind of show. No, there's one from Miami to uh, New York for 30 cents a mile. <laughs> enclosed oh, trailer required. required. 30 cents. And you know what they're going to say? Hey, it's it's three together. You know Here's what? Sarasota. Oh, this is a reverse snowbird. A Bentley this and a BMW 740 going to Ohio for 1500 bucks, 67 cents a mile. The broker's going to say, this is the going rate right now because it's, it's, a, it's to get you back so you can pick up another snowbird load. Because some big dummy will carry it is why. Yeah, he well. Y'all quit carrying them cheap loads. Well, one one man's one man's dumpster is another I man's know. restaurant cuisine. How many? Did you, guys, did you guys see what just happened here? This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> what happened, still got what no, happened? Money, money's horrible right now i mean it's not just florida it's the whole country i guess it's kind of typical for january february you know last year was a little anomaly year we had some more money but hey i want to show you something dave go back to your florida deal you pulled up there watch this this is really funny go back to it yeah 
where you said there were 251 cars? Yeah. Pull that up again for the audience. All right. Let's take a look at this. This is great. All right, so we want to go back up here and go back. We want to change it from enclosed to all. And then search. All right. 250. So one of them got picked up. <laughs> here's here's these, these 39 cent loads, man. Never load anything on your trailer less than 50 cents. Well, and I, well, I wouldn't take that unless I had to. Well, here's what I'm trying to figure out. We're talking about the entire state of Florida. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. 200. I don't, Dave, I don't haul cars for 50 cents in clubs, just so you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't blame you. I wouldn't either. I don't haul them open. Oh, we're right. missing the point, guys. We're missing the point. Point <laughs> is 250 cars in the entire state of Florida. Really? When in reality, right, forget about this load boards. Gonna, and this is where we're going to try to make a living, right here. Well, you got to start somewhere. I but, mean, but, but, I, but staying with this train of thought, forget load boards and bedtime stories and everything else. In reality, how many cars are really moving out of the state or within the state of Florida today? I mean, isn't it in the thousands? Tens Apparently. Of if there's only 250 on here, I'm sure it is. Well, that's, you got all the boards. And so, to go with what Ty's trying to get at, to itch that scratch, the point is, if 10% or less of all the vehicles that are moving are on the biggest load board, then there's a serious discrepancy about where you get the cars. Is this correct? Yeah, you get your cars at the rail yard. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been to a rail yard. Rabbit. And, and I, I, you know, I, I mean, I guess so. You know, you know what I do to solve a lot, a lot of, cars of that? At the rail yard. That's true. It, what I do, though, is it's typically I'm not one of these guys that goes out for five days and comes home at this point. You know, um, like this trip, I've been gone since the 22nd of December. And. Normally, I just put my truck where the money is. I, I mean, I'm not kind of spot market guy. You know, if the money's coming out of Los Angeles on the West Coast, my, that's where my truck goes. And I fly home. I, I just try to leave my truck in the spot market that works. And I'll fly home if I have to. I found it's a lot cheaper to fly home for a few days, leave my truck in the spot market that, that's got the money and fly back in than it is to try to take a load back to the east coast in a time like like today you know where like normally i wouldn't be in florida dealing with this but um you know you know it's not my i agreed to come down here i'm gonna deal with it i you know and the dealer actually knows that it's a bad market and offered to buy a car just to get me out of here if i needed it but i i actually have a client that has a car going out west here in a couple of days so I'm just going to kind of limp back towards North Carolina from Orlando. I, I got one car right now for 750 bucks. I put in today that's going to Greenville, which isn't bad. 750 to get out of Florida from Orlando to Greenville, South Carolina is pretty good right now. And, you know, and I'll do that this time. Yo, are you running all your numbers and stuff? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I, I average about a dollar 50 a mile overall. With no, I mean, are you do you are you running a CDL with the MC number? No, I don't have to deal with all that. That's the beauty of my little truck. Is I I don't need a CDL. I don't <laughs> deal with the IFTA tax. I mean, if right. I did, oh my god, it'd be I'd be a different world for me. You wouldn't be running in a close two car. <laughs> I'm trying yeah, to build sure. a six car enclosed, you know, and that takes time. You're talking yeah. you know, $250,000 might work for a, a nine car sometimes even, but it doesn't work. It hardly works from a, a single car enclosed. When you get start getting the cars I'm getting, you know, they typically are at a quarter million dollars per car, sometimes more. And, you know, it takes a while to get, get $3 million insurance. Um, it takes a while to get the clients to, to give you the car, to give you six cars that so cost that much money. So I'm just doing it single car at the moment. No CDL. 
So, uh, all right, Todd, tell us where to get the cars. But I want to say this. I like. I want to say this. I really like your flexibility and option of flying out and flying in because, oftentimes, uh, at, if if the business strategy is left up to me as a dispatcher. Getting the driver home can oftentimes be the least profitable part of the trip. Well, you know, I end, I end up in, let's say, Denver a lot. I mean, I'm in Denver a lot. I don't know why people always want me to go there. I, I do good in Colorado, but, um, you know, we'll fly home. It's like, I think the last time it was $140 to fly out and $100 to fly back. You know, and I'll lose more money trying to backhaul to to the East Coast than the two hundred and fifty bucks it costs to fly. Right, right. Yeah. So, and it's a tax write off. It's you know straight tax write off deduction, business expense. So I, I try to work it like that. And it, I mean, it's it it's pretty cool. I kind of like that. I'm sure it doesn't work every time, and sometimes, like you said, you can get back. But if it's really just not looking good, and you can just do a flight, what a great way to go. It's, yeah, it's definitely the way to go. I, I just can't, right now though, I don't see a good spot market to leave the truck in. This is a problem. Oh, that sucks. Well, but it is, it's January. December and January are the worst two months for load boards. And for, because if you don't, if, again, if you don't have customers or, I mean, if you're just spinning the wheel of fortune, December and January is not a good time to do that. <laughs> Right. You know, I, I haven't even started working the auctions yet. Like I don't go, I don't show up at Barrett Jackson or Meekum and hang out in the parking lot with the 60 reliable carriers on the lot and Hillbilly or whoever else shows up. I don't, I'm not even doing that yet. So. What do you, well, Ty, hey Ty, what do you think of what he just said about that? Would you do that if you were enclosed? Would you hang out at, at Barrett Jackson and Meekum and Hang out in the transport parking lot? I mean, yeah, I'm thinking, yeah, right? Because as you like to say, if you spend a whole day at an auction versus a whole day staring at a load board, which one's going to help you in the future? Auction. <laughs> I wouldn't right. buy more cars than I moved. Say that again, Dave? I would buy more cars than I moved. He didn't up spending money. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> Broke ass. High roller. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, <laughs> we all have a different, you know, <laughs> station in life. <laughs> oh, man. So, Ty, tell us where to get the cars. Yeah, Ty, what's going on? No, I'm still pretty confused. I, I'm pretty sure that. I just have to stick with your business strategy. What is your business strategy? And if your business strategy is to find cars on a load board, good. Speak up. Oh, sorry. That if your business, I always go back to business strategy, you know, it's like we keep talking about. I don't necessarily think I have the right answer. I know what I've done works for me, but uh, I'm starting to learn that I guess people survive on load boards. I just don't understand how. Or you know, well, I don't, I don't know. It's a double-edged sword, like I was saying. You know, if you got clients and you have to be where they they want you to be, so and you typically take a marginal pay in exchange for more work. So I've yeah. got guys, you know, I've got I, I've got a guy that that's owned a, a car dealership since he was 18 years old that I moved cars for. You know, I, I've got people that would love me to take on moving all their vehicles, but it's just not not what I want to do. You know, I kind of like that's it kind of takes part of the truck and the freedom of trucking out of it that I enjoy, which is, you know, being able to go where I want to go to kind of dispatch myself and um it puts me more more on a leash. And so to me, I don't know, trucking's good money. And it is about the money, don't get me wrong, but it's it's also a lifestyle that I enjoy. That I don't necessarily want to just go from New York to Florida and back with consistent work. It's just not not where I'm at right now. Well you know, I might wanna I might wanna go see see Colorado, go skiing. I might wanna be in Florida this week, maybe go to Oregon next week. 
And that's something I enjoy. And, ha- and I think that has a value also. Um, it's interesting you say that because that if you if you want to chase the money and just kind of drive around and see the country, you might favor booking off the load boards because then you get to you're not on a regular path, right? Right. But I mean, it's yeah. But and that that is can... a, that's a lifestyle choice. That'd be like backpacking across Europe. I mean, you're making a choice to kind of randomly backpack. Right. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> right. That, that, that's what I'm. I know is, what Paul's <laughs> in my opinion, what Paul's saying is he's saying that that's his business plan, his business strategy. He's doing it. It works. Mm-hmm. So that's where I can't say to a guy like Paul. Hey man, you know there's a better way. It's what he's doing, and, and that's what I think. It's kind of it's hard to have these these discussions, in my opinion, for for the for the audience, which is how many four thousand, how many people on live chat, whatever it is. But I just always think, I guess ultimately, what's your business strategy? What's your plan? And then work it. So Eric has a question, but before Eric's question, Justin. Really wants to get something answered. Okay, so Justin's talking about understanding carrier pay. So let's do this. Um, Because this is a really important thing to uh, make sure that we clarify. All right, so carrier pay. Oh, by the way, look at that. Oh, it's a T-check. Who loves T-checks? T-checks. I'm sorry. T-checks suck. By the way, the hell is a T check? Yeah, it must suck because I don't know what it is. T check isn't even a com check; it's a T check. Oh, it's like a J check. Yo, what's up? You guys gonna get paid by J with a J check? You know, like, like what? <laughs> what? <laughs> so it's like funny money. <laughs> it is a T check, and I mean, I'm just telling you my understanding. Okay, but a T check, my understanding, because I actually had to try to figure it out for a driver once, and a T check is only redeemable at certain gas stations that even know what a T check is, which isn't every gas station, and you can you can only get so much money. You can get the rest in like Piggly Wiggly snacks or whatever. It's nuts. You don't want a T check. A T check, it is. It's basically funny money. It's still dollars. It's just indirect dollars. So, you know, like you get $800 in beanie weenies and then 100 bucks cash and then 300 in like red licorice. You still got $1,200 essentially just you're going to have to go sell beanie weenies now. I don't know. I mean, I know that can't be right, but all right, so let's move on. Okay, so carrier pay. 650 company check. All right, so... Uh, I think what Justin's asking is he's. I think he's getting. Um, I think he wants to clarif- get clarification in the carrier pay in dollars and the cents per mile. And really, the the clarification is this: cents per mile is merely a way of understanding how much money you're making per mile. But this is totally separate from the carrier pay, or rather. It's still within carrier pay. So 650 is what the carrier's gonna make for hauling four vehicles from Nashville to Huntsville. And if you break that down, it's 121 miles from Nashville to Huntsville, and that's 650 divided by four vehicles divided by 121 miles means you're earning a buck thirty-four per mile per vehicle. And if you if if you don't know you know, if you don't have the business plan and you, if you don't know your cost per mile and your business expenses and how much you <laughs> spend on fuel and tires and licensing and insurance <laughs> and truck and trailer, you don't know any of that stuff. You just know that some guy flashing $100 bills at a truck stop told you, just make sure you make a dollar a mile and you can be as rich as me. Then you can look at that and go, oh, I am within the Blues Brothers gold bar mentality. I will, okay, so I like to make jokes, and that helps. But I will say this, is that when I started as a dispatcher, I was told 
just make sure you make at least 50 cents a mile per vehicle. I didn't know anything, but I did know. And this is why you have you'll have brokers you'll have the you'll have a broker the the doppelganger of the dispatcher may not know anything except how to jack up the promises and get you know half of the money. So it, if you book a car for less than fifty cents a mile, you are losing money no matter what your costs are. And, you're if going you're, broke. and you're if you're breaking even, that's great. Because if you're in business to break even, then this is the load board for you. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, but I, I I threw that cost per mile out the window a long time ago. My my goal is to make in my little truck a thousand a day. And that's that's the way I look at it. Can I can I go pick up those cars, deliver them wherever they're going, get them off my trailer, and still make a thousand dollars today? You and, do that with a two car? Yeah, I mean, I do on a bad on the bad bad days where I'm compromised, and it's it's about seven hundred a day, and then on the better days I'll run about twelve hundred actually. Yeah, because that's my goal is is a thousand dollars a day, and I'm moving forward in time. Maybe I need to get a two car. Yeah, you got doing this all wrong. <laughs> it. I mean, I put in bikes, and you know, I've had five bikes in my trailer with a car before. I've had two cars and a bike in my trailer. I I've run my trailer as high as four dollars a mile for a thousand miles, actually. Um, but you know, that I think of it more as as a goal. It's like, what can I do in a day, and you know, so it, it, if I'm kind of lollygagging and taking a lot of breaks and I'm not feeling that great, so I'm not driving as far down the road and it takes me a little extra time or whatever, that's kind of on me. That was my choice. But it, it, if I can cover six, seven hundred miles for a thousand dollars, that's pretty much where I'm trying to be at. You know, that's a, I consider that a day's work. And, and if I didn't get seven hundred miles or six hundred miles down the road, that's and it was my fault that. You know that's something I took from the business, so I I just look at it like that. Did I have the potential to make a thousand a day? And, and I want to say this is that I like what you said is that so fifty cents a mile is very important that I clarify this. When I say fifties, because Sergeant Schill is almost about to throw me out with the bathwater. The deal is is fifty cents a mile is reasonable if you're in the Midwest. If you're in this, you know, mid Southwest where it's just flat and you could do like the bird box challenge and probably still get there. Okay. But if you're in New Jersey and you're booking 50 cents a mile, you need to get out. You need to yeah. go get, go turn in your payday loan, go sell your truck and, and find out, you know, how to get into brokering and lead generation. Yeah. And get that money back. So 50 cents a mile is only reasonable in the Midwest. But even in the Midwest, if you want to make money, you got to be above 50 cents a mile per car. And thousand and a thousand dollars a day is a good way at looking at am I going to get cuz you need to get to I think a car hauler needs to get to 5 grand a week one way or another. You need to be in the thousands a week. If you're if you're doing the t if you're moving a car ten miles and you're pulling in like twenty five bucks a car and you're moving it ten miles, if you can do twenty a day, okay. But if if you're down at like four a day, if you're if you're if you're making two hundred bucks a day, if you're grossing two hundred a day, that is not going to work out well. No. So you're going to be broke, which is why then again, at, as it, looking on load boards, what I'm looking for, you want to hear, here's your, here's a good search. Since we're talking about load boards and I know, you know, Ty loves talking about load boards, loves it. See, Ty's running nine cars though. <laughs> you can't, if you got a nine car and you're looking at the load board, you might as well shoot yourself in the head. <laughs> load boards are for, Load boards are for three and four car trailers, five car trailers. If you got a nine car trailer, you better be taking your ass to the rail yard. Here's what we're going to do. 
<clears throat> Let's say we're a three-car wedge. All right. How are we going to make some money, Jay? All right. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to look at Indiana, Michigan, Ohio. <clears throat> and we're going to go south. All right. Tennessee. All right, and we're gonna um we're no we're we're gonna go in the south. You got Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi. All right, so we're gonna do Ohio, Michigan, Indiana to the south, and we're gonna look in the next thirty days, and five hundred. We're gonna do a minimum. We're gonna do two minimums. We're gonna do minimum sixty cents a mile, which is I mean that we're gonna see we should see a lot, although this is January. And I want seven hundred dollars per vehicle. All right. So I just I want to get up there. I want to see thousand dollar vehicles. Come on, fax machine. Give me that fax machine. Come on. Come on. Fax machine coming. Where's that fax machine? This is the new Central Dispatch soundtrack. <laughs> Where'd it go? <laughs> 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 that is awesome. Oh, oh, did I forgot to change my? Oh, dang it! Now I got it. Wait a minute, I got to rewind the fax machine. You got that pencil? Let's put the pencil eraser back yeah. in the tape and turn it. We're gonna re. There we go. There we go. All right, rewind the cassette tape. All right, here we go, here we go. <laughs> Jay, what the hell is that? This is crazy. Okay, all right, I think we, I think we got it, Jay. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder dispatchers don't get any work done. Because we're busy playing with the damn telephone. <laughs> I can't get the search to work. It's like nail scratching a chalkboard. Okay, Sergeant Schill is telling us to stop before everybody jumps off. Okay. All right, so let's try this again. My search didn't work. All right, let's see. What am I doing wrong, Central? Indiana. Seven hundred dollars is too high. Seven hundred is too high. Yeah, if you can get seven hundred dollars going from Ohio to Arkansas, I'm gonna get your butt. I can. Oh, it's total quality logistics. Okay, there we go. Now we got it. Okay, all right. Let's rewind the tape. All right. So who's got the Betamax? We burn all them. Oh, come on. Say it ain't so. It ain't so. All right, here we go. All right, the A-track is wound. All right, here we go. A hundred, here we go. All right, here's what we're looking for. See, see now look, by the way, reindeer. Okay, did you know that reindeer is looking for carriers? And if they, if they, if they, if they can get carriers to pick up loads, um, then they will pay a referral fee. Now, I've contacted reindeer to let them know that they need to hook up with Auto Transport Intel so I can help get them carriers and tap into that affiliate network fee. I'm a reindeer carrier. They actually pay well. I know. That's why they're up here in the 70 cents a mile. They'll actually pay whatever you tell them you want. So here's what we do. We're looking. Oh, well, they, it, now, you know, sometimes. But I will say, I got good things to say about reindeer, for sure. Um, so what we're looking for is we are looking for, if, if, if we were going to start our route up there. Here's my idea. I want to get, oh, I would say, I want to get up there and I want to get, oh, here we go. Now, here we go. Now here's your here's your GMC Sierra Denali package, Fort hey, Wayne Jay. to Texas. There we go, twelve hundred dollar SUV. Hey Jay, yeah. Who's Integrity Elite Prestige Motor Inc. What? Yeah, who's that? Elite. I don't know. Broker, I don't know. But they are. Who are they, Jay? They're a broker, and they are super high class. Best in the universe, galactic, uh, <laughs> um, like super solar, awesome, sonic, super, super awesome solar sonic, ink. For some reason, I'm not buying it. All right, let's check it out. They need to get out some more money. Kelvin. Yeah, business type dealer. Huh. Ah. 
Nailed it. You know, you know, oftentimes dealers, and it's interesting that you, it's, I think it's pretty cool that you picked him out of a hat, dude, because dealers, if, if I could get this car, I would definitely, I would, I would send him ski trip tickets and with a Bruce Springsteen appetizer and see if we could do regular business. I'd ask him if he likes. Cars. I'd ask him if he likes the Mushu pork. With the I would sp- ask him how Central Dispatch let him on a trucking load board. Oh. That's what I don't. Why is he on here? Because he needs carriers and he doesn't know. He doesn't know who to talk to. Well, his carrier's down there in Orlando. See, see him down there, and he wants that car moved yesterday. That's the problem I had. Because I got several contacts. No like way. Guys talking. Yeah. No, check it guys out. T- I just got a super chat. I just got a killer super chat. You know who it is? Ooh. We're gonna we're gonna talk about Run Buggy for a second. Um, it just so happens, Mark. Um, Happy New Year, Mark. Thank you, man. Um, Mark is down in San Diego. And you guys know, remember when I was live from San Diego? We're going we're gonna to talk about Run Buggy. All right. Hey, man, I'm, a, I'm on loop. It's a good thing we're not playing the fax machine. <coughs> so Mark is with Run Buggy in San Diego, and good things are happening at Run Buggy. And um, I hope that we can do more cross-promotion for each other. I know that he's been doing events at the Mannheim San Diego and um, Mark is trying to help improve carrier options of where to find loads. So Mark, you picked the perfect time to talk about and, and, and help this channel help the ecosystem, help you and help me and help us all. So God help us. So thank you, Mark and Rug Bu- Run Buggy. I really appreciate it. And so if you're not signed up with Run Buggy, you check it out. This is another place, especially in the Southwest. That's where he's mainly at right now is the Southwest portion of the U.S. If you're in the Southwest, get signed up with Run Buggy. Go to runbuggy.com. This is the website. Explains the purpose. And, um, and, and they, and they certainly want to help you be a more successful car hauling business. So Mark, I really appreciate that. Thank you so much, buddy. Hey Jay. Yeah, man. Big blue has got a comment down there. Uh, oh yeah. 10 one. That's right. And I owe him a reply. Okay. That, okay. You gotta be super, super careful, man. can not everybody can do that. I would not advise it. Yeah. You might get away with it for a little while, but when you get busted, it's going to cost you way more than all that other stuff. Well, what are you doing? Yeah. Go ahead and talk about it. Running. uh, I'll let Jay tell. No, I didn't. I didn't read it. Dave, you're already on it. Please, Dave. All right. It says Paul sounds like he's got it going on. He's saving a lot of time and money, headache. No CDL, no IFTA, no DOT, no MC. Think about it. Yes, I would think about it. Because yeah. if you get caught, for one, you may go to jail. It's going to cost you tens of thousands of dollars in fines. And if you get in an accident and you don't have the insurance to cover your ass, you could go to jail. Just saying. Who's doing that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't advise it, people. It sounds good, but I don't advise it. You don't advise what, Dave? Not having a CDL? No, running without all the correct insurance and stuff. Oh. If you're if you're no, hauling, I, mean, I, I got insurance, you know. But. Yeah, but I'm talking about if you're going to be a truck driver, be a truck driver. I mean. You can't, you can get you a single or a double enclosed trailer and do that, yes. But man, oh man, you're taking a lot of risk. Because all it takes is to get into an accident or get pulled over, and they will bust your ass. 
Oh, no. Yeah, I do everything I can to operate legally and lawfully. So. Well, this guy thinks you're not. I'm actually so. the small. I'm the smallest carrier in the American Trucking Association. Why does actually, Why does he think that? Does he think that? I don't know. By his statement, he says it, it sounds like it. Right. No, I mean I I carry a quarter million dollar cargo insurance currently, and I work with like when I haul five hundred thousand dollar cars, people know I only have two hundred fifty thousand. I I we pull out some things. Um, you know, McLaren's been known to cover the cars in my trailer at times because I can't cover them. Yeah, that it's definitely good to have, and you can you can actually get fined pretty bad by not having an MC number and stuff. No, I got all that. Um, you know, well, I'm, a, I'm a full blown carrier. I'm a full blown carrier in a pickup truck. I'm just the smallest carrier in the fleet. Okay, well, he misunderstood you. Yeah, yeah. Definitely misunderstood. You know, I, I've got MC numbers on my door, DOT numbers. I carry insurance. I do the whole thing. I don't have to pay IFTA taxes because I don't qualify. I stick, keep my truck small. You know, at least right now. Are you running a commercial tag? Uh, no. Well, I mean, in the state of North Carolina, <laughs> anytime you register a truck, um, Anytime you have a truck that can carry load, it, you have commercial tags. So my tags are registered to 18,000 pounds. So you should have to IFTA too then? No, you don't have to IFTA in this setup. You don't, I don't if even think, I don't remember the IFTA rules off the top of my head, but it requires a truck with more than two axles. A combination no. over over twenty six thousand pounds, or a trailer no. rated over ten thousand pounds, and I, I have a ten thousand pound trailer. No, if you cross state lines in a commercial vehicle <laughs> as a motor carrier, you have to pay IFTA. That's not true. No, it has three exceptions. I've and, and, and I've had this. You know, I've been through level one inspections, and and I've had DOT officers go out after me for this, but I I never get a ticket. I don't qualify for IFTA. Huh. And I pay, That's... you know, I pay fully for my compliance. I, I let the fully hit on my back end and we did some studying on this and I, I definitely don't need IFTA taxes. That's been proven. I thought you well, had to have it if you cross state lines commercially. You have to have an MC number to do that, but not IFTA. Yeah, if, but... If you can pull a trailer it, it's my understanding that you know you could have you could actually have a combination over twenty six thousand pounds gross vehicle weight, and if your trailer is still class three, which is ten thousand pounds or below, you you don't have to pay IFTA. You look at the regulation. That's that's not true. Now we I'd have to we could pull it up. But we'll read it. It's got it's got three exemptions in the IFTA standard. That I remember. I just don't, you know, don't remember them verbatim off the top of my head. I didn't mean to get a what? sidetrack. I was just well, looking at his. No, his, I, uh, I like. Well, my guess is that Paul's probably been through a DOT station and already been through all this before. Oh yeah. There you go. And, I, <laughs> and if you can get, if you can get through a DOT station uh, with an understanding, well, then 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 that understanding probably stands, Your Honor. Hey, by the way, I just found yeah, I found a route here. Look at this, man. Smart Auto Wholesale. Detroit to Tulsa. Here you go. You're looking for a route? You got truck, Malibu. If you can hold two trucks, you may or may not be able to, but here, look at this. Here's a here's a G eight going to Little Rock. Or you can or you can help look at this. Look at this Lincoln Navigator to Fayetteville for a thousand. There you go. That's why I searched Michigan, Indiana, Ohio to the south. It's one of my favorite running lanes. Now, the thing is, you still are looking at, see the cents per mile? I mean, that's about as high as you're going to get in December and January off of a load board. And if you have, but if you have a relationship, <clears throat> it's close. I mean, you, you could probably get closer to a dollar a mile. And if you were up in the Northeast, 
you're talking two dollars a mile which that's the problem on the load board you're you're just probably never going to get to near two dollars a mile which is where the carrier really should be but hey jake they're just not going to post Frank it Cutter. yeah please all right i mean we were talking about if so i saw i i pulled it up on another phone so to, 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 to need IFTA, you must weigh over 26,000 pounds, which I don't, or have three or more axles on the power unit, which I do not, or, uh, let's see, that's the bus passenger. There's another for the trailer. It doesn't mention it, but yeah, you've got you've to have at least three axles on the power unit before you worry about IFTA. You should. And it says that yeah. right, right, right in the regulation. Now, I, I, I've had some DOT That's officers cool. come out and tell me I need IFTA, and we have this conversation, and then they walk off with their tail between their legs and go back inside. You know, I don't have, for for starters, I don't have three axles on my power unit. I'm not over twenty six thousand. I never pounds. have either. Right. <laughs> Huh. Well, that's cool to know. Yep. All these regulations are confusing, and, you know, it's even the opposite. Well, I, I must say, and actually, I was just responding. Somebody sent me an email uh, that um, they're really enjoying the different uh, topics, the back and forth, the interaction of the live chat. I mean, I want to thank Eric for being involved in the live chat. Um, and, and believe me, Eric, um, I, I don't think that there's any real misunderstanding here. As you can see, we have half of our panel trying to get clarification on just one specific rule. And this is one of the problems of FMCSA guidelines, DOT enforcement of those guidelines, there's 48 states domestically. You got thousands of carriers. You got hundreds, if not thousands, of different officers. And one of them just kicked the dog or got out of the, you know, the eggs were too runny. I mean, there are a million parameters. It's really difficult. And so it's really important to have this kind of debate and figure out, gosh, what do I need to brush up on before I end up, you know, serving a guy runny eggs for the second time in one night? Yeah, and don't forget, we give the law enforcers their own discretion as well, Jay. Yeah, exactly. Hey, exactly. That's good. You know? So, man, he's having a great day, and he likes you, and he decides he's not going to enforce that law on you. That's right. I want you to do yeah. that. Which is why I always say pretty please and all that stuff. Absolutely. Easy peasy. It's not easy peasy. <laughs> Bunch of pile of trash, <laughs> dumpster. That's where FMCSA belongs in the dumpster. That's where Eddie Murphy on Trading Places said, "May I suggest using your nightstick, officer?" Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here! Is what he said. <laughs> yeah, well, I I like this. I use this statement a lot. It's I do my best to operate a legal and lawful entity. You know, nobody's perfect, but I'm doing I'm always doing my best to try to be as legal as I can be. You know, I'm always I'm trying okay, doing my so best. You a wrap up here. We got let's find out where we can find cars. All right. Yeah, tell us tell us where we get the car. Well, we just want to know. I just want to know, Jay. I've been here for an hour. And I still don't know. <laughs> I, I'll find the damn all car. I know is that Paul's <laughs> running illegal. Ty's about to lose it. <laughs> <laughs> I just <Yep>. it. <laughs> <laughs> well, shoot, man. Well, you know, our, you, you you get in closed cars at the racetrack. That's where the clients are. They like to bring their cars to the track. Okay. So, Which, if you want enclosed clients, you hang out at, at road courses. And that brings hey, us to Ty. Ty. Okay. Well, I'm going to do this. Go, I'm going to say, go where. We, Here's where we learn. Here's what I learned tonight. It, apparently, if it's four or less, we go to load boards. Ooh. If it's four or more, 
we're going to have Jay, do you want to announce what's coming up next month? This would be a great time to talk about it. This would be a good time to talk about it. So, so guys, next month, what we're going to do is, haven't talked about <laughs> it at all, but what we're going to do is next month, we're going to have Fleet February. So you heard it here first on Auto Transport Intel, Fleet February is coming up. So um, we're going to talk, we're going to spend the month of February talking about fleets, talking to fleets, what are fleets caring, you know, what's on their mind, what are their pain points, what do they care about, and um, because it Where is... Where do they get their cars? It, it, and that's a, and it's, it's a different animal. Usually on this show, what's interesting is a year ago, I was very dispatcher, <coughs> dispatching centric, okay? And then six months ago, I kind of opened up into brokers and shippers and now I think we, you know, I think recently we've gotten back into owner operator concerns. Where do we get cars? We've been talking about load boards and central dispatch. But next month, we're going to go into fleet February. All right. So I'm hoping that's, um, I'm hoping it's exciting. And I'll tell you what, what's really cool about fleet February for the owner operator. Oh. No contraire, Mo Frere. This is not an exclusion show because there is a lot to learn. Say that one more time. Contraire, no fair. No, no fair, contraire. I thought this was a family show. Okay. It's not that kind of show. What? So, dr dr drivers. Button. I really want to hear that. <laughs> we got to we got to rewind the Betamax. Contraire, mon frere. What'd you say? Oh, oh no, contraire, mon frere. <laughs> yeah, it's. I think it's French. You guys never heard that? I don't know. I don't know. I was. That one I was raised in Oklahoma, and that's you know that's just my mea culpa, but. Um, <laughs> Uh, the, here's the thing is, as a driver, it's important to know what the fleet owners are thinking so you can interact with them better. Because it just so happens that a lot of the concerns of the fleet owner and manager have to do with you, the driver. And they're looking for good drivers, and maybe some of their expectations seem a bit lofty. But we want to talk about what it is they're thinking about, because if you're a fleet, if you're a fleet driver, if you're a company man, and you want to go and work for a fleet, you're gonna at least want to know what they're thinking about. Well, too, it can tie in real well with the three, four car, two car enclosed as well, because a lot of fleets end up putting all their trash on central dispatch. So if you make friends with the big fleet guy, you can cut out the central dispatch spending 14 hours trying to figure out how to put three cars in three different locations to go halfway across the United States and drop them off at three different locations too. It's kind of like, you just made me think of like, think of like a, think of like a gutter system coming off of the roof and you got your main gutters and those are your fleets and off of your main gutters, you've got your side gutters. And off your side gutters, you might have, it finally gets down to just like a wheelbarrow and a couple of dishes. Now, if you are eating off of Central Dispatch, you're at the teacup at the end of the wheelbarrow. But if you can move up the gutter system and get to the side gutter right off the main gutter, you're going to get more fresh rainwater coming off the roof than the little teacup at the end of the wheelbarrow. There we go. Okay. Beautiful. Yeah. Perfect. Man. Nailed it. <laughs> we didn't even rehearse that, I, man. That was classic. And that's why I, I, I tell everybody, as soon as the phone call gets good, I want to hit pause, and I want to take this live on Auto Transport Intel. So I'm going to stick with auctions, uh, dealers, and friends. That's going to be my final answer. That's where I find my cars, auctions, dealers, and friends. Nice, auctions. Yeah, but who dealers. calls you the auction? The Does auction the auction call you? They do. Say it again. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Did I freeze or what? And and, and I froze. Right, and I've met a couple of his friends, 
and auction contacts. And actually, it makes a heck of a lot of sense. Because then it's just a matter of how many do you have. We're not even... We're not negotiating 50 bucks. And we're not talking about, can you pick it up today? And we're not trying to figure out how to shove family luggage in the back seat. None of that stuff. We're trying to figure out how many how many do you have? How many can I take right now? It's pretty cool. And it is. It's pretty cool. I've seen it. It works. Yeah. So it's interesting. Auctions, dealers, and friends. And, and, and so, yeah, please. Recap. So Paul's yeah. hanging out at NASCAR. Right. I'm hanging out sure. at auctions and dealers. And Dave, where are you? I am hanging out at the house, man. Because <laughs> I, I ain't got no dispatcher. Uh, <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> oh, so. that means I don't got to do nothing until I get a dispatcher. What about that? Oh, we got to find no. you a dispatcher. I, I actually, I think that's a good new segment for the show. The quest. I might just go hang out at the office for the dispatcher. Give me one of the real creepy hats. There you creepy go. Hats. Make sure you yeah. take some creepy business cards, too. I'll be at the guy oh. at the auction that stands behind the pole, and I'll <laughs> look out every now and then to see if anybody sees me. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. They'll be like, who's that creepy bastard behind the pole? He's just another car hauler. You're, he's fine. He's just no. I'm reading the IFTA law. Oh, you heard that? I got yeah. him on the IFTA now. Yeah, because it's, you don't travel to Tennessee very often, do you? Yeah, I come through Tennessee a lot. I mean, I'm from North Carolina, so I, I hit all the potholes on the east side or the west side of Tennessee on I-40 a lot. Ooh, I hate Man, that. We got some. Those, those <laughs> are closed all the time. I know where those potholes are. So I'll go through any scale anytime. I, 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 they ain't gonna touch my truck. Trust me. I tell you what, this is kind of cool. We got some. We get. We got some. Some of our viewers that sometimes show up in different times. Are tuning in. We got Silver Mint is here. What's up, Silver Mint? Colin Trout made it. ABC one two three made it. Uh, ABC. Yeah. One, two, American three. Veterans Auto Transport made it. I think that's a first. That's Alicia at American Veterans. That's cool. So I tell you what. Here's what we're gonna do. Ty was helping us Bob, recap. Please. Yeah, exactly. So we here's what we got. We are now coming up on ten thirty. So I've got candy at Jack's Port Storage. And we're going to talk to her next. We're going to find out what's going on at the port. And she's still alive? Yeah, she, she said she just emailed me and said she's ready for the phone call. I know, she's East Coast. She's keeping wanna, it real. Hey, bring her on. I want to be here for this one. This is good. Everybody will love this one. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's see if we can do it. I'll tell you what. Um, Let's do this. All right, Candy. I'll, I'll stick around for Candy. You guys will love candy. Yeah, candy. Actually, you know what? Let's do this. Let's do this. Is a first time on Auto Transport Intel. I'm just right. gonna. I'm gonna put candy in the middle. Exactly. Let's bring. Let's bring her in. Okay. Bring her in, man. So here, let's do this. You guys are gonna love what Candy has to say. Yeah, she has Whoa. got a very interesting business. Whoa. And she gets a lot of. Uh, She's almost like community outreach for carriers at the ports. Like if you got a problem, if you're at Jacksonville and you got a problem, she will help you. She was just telling me that she held a car for a guy so, that was having uh, trouble getting paid. Any vehicle with appropriated tags has to have IFTA. So you don't have appropriated tags. Apportioned or appropriated? Apportioned? Uh, Portion. 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 Yeah. A Right. Right. A portion. That's what. Right. That's that's why. If you have, yes, sir. He's shaking his head. No. If you got, you so your tags are just standard tags. Then. I've got commercial tags. Right. You don't They're have not, a, you don't have a portioned plating. You have standard commercial tags. Right. Right. Like an H one, H two. I don't know what that means. H1, yeah, H2. Like if you got a dually, you have an H1 tag. And if you're running like a 650, you got an H2 tag and so on. 
you don't you don't have you don't have like regular plates like he's got on his semis and I got on my truck. No, I've got regular commercial business plates. Right. Yeah, that that's why you don't have to have that, uh, and that's why I they don't try to. Pay, write you. I don't I don't want to pay EFTA not right now. <laughs> well, neither does anybody else, but it's part of it though. But that's why is you don't have appropriated right. plates. You just have a standard commercial tag. Like my gutter business, my gutter business has all commercial tags. But if you're if you're crossing state lines commercially, you should be paying IFTA. If you're if you're traveling in more than one jurisdiction, I don't give a shit what kind of truck it is, you should be paying IFTA. That's not what the regulation the regulations don't say. I mean that's that sounds like the regulations to have an MC number. But the no. regulations for for IFTA include being over twenty six thousand pounds, having more than than three axles, or having three axles on the power unit, and a trailer over ten thousand pounds. So. No, it's it's your tag. Where's it's Candy? Your tag that Where's determines Candy? that. She's here. So Candy hey. is here, guys. Let's say hello to hey, Candy. Candy. Hey, Candy. Hey, y'all. Hey, How you hey. doing? Good. I'm in the car, so I know it's, it's dark. Oh, that's cool. No, I Hi, Candy. Because my signal isn't good, so I got in the car. Ah, uh, cool. thanks for coming out. Yeah, so late. thank you. We we really appreciate it. Thank yeah, you. Awesome. Trip. So what? <laughs> we can hear you good. And and you you were telling me earlier we were doing a video test. That was hours ago. Seems like yesterday. That yeah. you were up early. You work a long day. I mean, you know. So you you are really you're burning the midnight oil right now. Yeah, I'm trying. Yeah, but y'all funny, so yeah, so it's good. This yeah, this show yeah. is is kind of off the hook tonight. Yeah, yeah for real, it's a trip. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So so let's just dive right in. What's what's going on at the port? I mean, to us, you know, we're you're there every day, and I like to remind people, you know, like you're you're there every day. What seems normal to you is actually kind of interesting, fascinating, and unknown to others. So what's going on at the port? What do you do at the port in Jacksonville? Uh, I guess the best way I mitigate, I fix problems. It started out, we were Twig escorts. I used to be a broker. I was a freight forwarder. I was, uh, I want to tell all my government jobs, yeah. <laughs> but I worked in maritime logistics for a long time. Wow. Drove truck. I've been a driver a long time. So I just got a little twisted view on the port and I liked it because it was hands on doing the escorting, get to meet a lot of good drivers. And then you end up becoming like family when you genuinely care. So they start running into the same problems, not getting paid or not knowing how to get paid or not. The biggest thing is not having an operational cost, not knowing what it is. And you just keep seeing it over and over and then they disappear and, now you've made friends with them and they're out of business and you just want to help. But, um, so that's what I do. I just, I try and fix problems. Sometimes they end up looking at you like you're the bad person and you know, people like to pass blame, but we just fix a lot of problems. Uh, we get people on the port who don't have Twix credentials. We have a drop yard where you can drop vehicles. Um, and we, we deal with the headache of getting them delivered where the booking status may not be correct uh, is just a whole nother entity of car hauling, auto transport, logistics. And I want to say this too. I like to like when Ty and I are coaching, I like to jump in and, and just uh, interpret a little bit. And I want to say this, that for anybody that doesn't know that you need a TWIC card, T-W-I-C, transportation worker information credential, something like that, you can just Google TWIC, right? Yeah. Say, what's it stand for? Transportation Workers Identifications Credential. Okay. And so and you get that. That's a government-issued credential, so you can go deliver and pick up at the port. And in that process, you're going to learn a lot of the specifics of working at the port, and which is also can be time-consuming, and you got dock receipts, and, oh, my gosh, the copies of dock receipts and the paperwork – and the titles and the, oh man, it's insane, right? Yeah, it changes every day too. And so if you're not familiar with that, um, being able to tap into the knowledge of somebody like you, Candy, is, I mean, that's, that can be really, really beneficial. 
um, to a carrier that finds himself. Maybe maybe you're a driver and you're near Jacksonville. Maybe home is near Jacksonville. You're going to end up picking up or delivering at the port, not knowing what to do. And so I just want to say it now because we're going to keep talking to you. But if somebody had a question for you, they can contact you, right? Jack's Port Storage. Yeah, Jack's Port Storage at, at gmail.com. Gmail and what's cool, too, is that you said that you also provide escort services. If you don't have a TWIC card and you need to get on or off the port, you're going to need to have somebody that can help you get access to the port. It's kind of like showing up at the airport and you can't walk through the metal detector. What are you going to do? Yeah. yeah. You need or... somebody to help you get through the metal detector, get to the gate, and vice versa. And that's what the escort does is literally on your behalf helps you do that i mean and there's a fee attached but what else are you going to do and then you also said storage yard because in many cases if you could just leave the car at the storage yeah. facility and avoid all the time and hassle and headache for a fee it's like carpooling but it's ports right yeah exactly pretty much and it's, it's twick escort we try and make sure we use the word twick escort on the beginning we get a lot of weird Twisted calls sure. all night long, sure. all night long. Yeah, we just serve the support, just support. Right. Yeah, uh, and I, <laughs> it, it, specifically. Well, and it's it's, it's kind of like anything else. Let's say you were a mechanic and you got to change the nipples. You'd be like, okay, all right, all right, all right. Yeah. But after a while, you're like, listen, I mean, it's just that's what they call it. It's the twick escort. Yeah. yeah, exactly. The problem we run into. I, I I like the fact that we get to touch so many different drivers, and it's. It's entertainment in one sense because it has to be because it's the same scenarios over and over. You know, when you do something so long, you get a lot of drivers who promise they're never coming back to the port again. <laughs> and sure. as soon as they say it, I look them in the eyes because I'm like timing to go, am I going to see them in two months or in, in two weeks? You know, because <laughs> there's an abundance of freight that goes in and out of the ports. Used and OEM manufacturers are there. So the Twig escorting, it gives you a guided tour. You know, it's like we're ambassadors. We used to be ambassadors for all the terminals, but it's kind of limited now. But you get to, to learn the port and have a guide there without getting screwed around, just driving around in circles all day. So we, we do hope that people get their Twig. Um, me specifically, because I love car haulers. I love logistics. So you you want drivers to have that power, to be empowered, to be able to haul a different kind of freight. You know, like, it's like a driver's license. If you can get it, you know, why would you drive without having it? Just just get it. What's the saying? It's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. So at least, right. you know, try and get the twig. Some people can't. Some people don't want their twig. And they come every week, and I thank you kindly, you know, but... Why not try and get it just to to get it acclimated with other other type of work? You got Volkswagen. You can't have it if you're a felon. <laughs> Wait again. You can't have it if you're a felon. Oh, well, some yeah, you right. can't. It's a lot of felonies. Yeah. There are only about five different felonies that stop you from having a twig. We well, got <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of people with felonies with twig cars, but My you rather fly. Fire, I never used it. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Well, just stick, keep it. You might want to use it one day. Well, you're in the middle of the country. You're in Nashville. It's not they a expire every they two have years. A there. They have a, a, a TSA. TSA is called Identigo. And uh, that's where you go to get your airport clearance, too. To, um, what is it called? The pre boarding oh, for so the you airport? Can, you can speed board or whatever they call it. Yeah. yeah exactly. You do it at the same type facility, at the same facilities. Tell Candy, tell us about Central Dispatch. Yeah. What do you know about Central Dispatch? Yeah. Oh, uh, I dispatched for a long time. You know, I was uh, I was a beast on Central Dispatch. You know, because Oops. I drove trucks, I know little towns, big towns. You know, so I did really good as a dispatcher just because I knew how to navigate through Central. And I had good relationships with Reindeer. I knew who to develop my best relationships with because I dispatched enough guys where I had to have companies that had to work, you know, and we're in Jacksonville. A lot of guys like to run short. So Atlanta's close. So we get up with a lot of exporters, 
You know, I love well, Central Dispatch. It, what, uh, what it is, it's a tool. Ha- having a holding yard mm-hmm. in a busy location, I mean, that is, that's a good deal. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Well, what were some of the things that or you were telling us about the other day about Central Dispatch, some shady business? What was that about? Oh, Lord. Yeah, we were talking about uh, how Central Dispatch has allowed, (laughs) get that look on your face, how Central has allowed so many, so many unlicensed people, uh, unlicensed businesses or entities that have accounts that they really don't govern. And some of them are good guys, but they're still not dealers. They don't have insurance. They don't have a bond. So what that means for you, like as a carrier or as like they don't have to pay you and central dispatch does not honor let's say you have a cod going to the port if on your central dispatch contract it says cod and you don't collect before you drop that car like it, it's for free they don't have to pay you um you rent it for free if if you're dealing with a character that doesn't want to pay you central is not gonna let a negative rating stay up there because COD means COD. And if you don't collect your money, then that was on you. You delivered a car. It shouldn't have came off your trailer in their eyes. And it's a lot of new new drivers and kind drivers who uh, just, they respect their business and, and they think that other people feel the same way about their business and they don't. They're trying to hustle you so that you'll drop it, deliver it, and they don't have to pay you. Go in there and bust your nose. And you were, you were saying... It sounds like several people have figured out how to catch drivers in a jam, especially at delivering at the port, right? It's kind of like, it seems like a few people have kind of turned it into a bit of a scam. Well, it's a lot of them that do. And most of them, if you, to me, it's kind of like, because there's so many new drivers Drivers who assume that businesses have good intent, they don't press the issue thinking they're going to get paid later, and they just don't recognize that loophole. They haven't been um, in an experience. And some of them have, a lot of them know now. You know, we, we're popular with cars. It's a few of us here in town, but we're popular with cars because a lot of drivers know, yo, he's not taking phone calls anymore. I picked this car up. He blew me up. From the time I headed to Copart to the time I got to the exit for the port, as soon as I get to 41, now the Magic Jack phone isn't ringing. It's not working anymore. And um, they're not able to get in touch with the customer about collecting their money. So I see a lot of drivers, they don't negotiate and truly have the terms of their delivery worked out before they load that freight on their back, before they put their car on. They don't have the money part worked out. So they get down here and they don't get paid or they end up, you know. I was just going to say, and, <laughs> and you know what? Central Dispatch, and, and it's not not just Central Dispatch in this case, but load boards are good places to catch somebody new, you know, to catch a new fly into the web that doesn't know. You know, like on Pulp Fiction, when he calls Zed and says, Spotter caught another fly? Yeah. That's what this Fresh meat. Yeah. Yep. Spider caught they another fly. Yeah. Oh, Jay. Yeah. Jay, I was going to add, um, what Candy mentioned, there's a lot of people on the load boards that don't necessarily have bonds and stuff that she probably sees a lot of that because the first thing I think of is uh, exporters. Yes. You know, there's, there's a lot of exporters on Central and they're not required to have surety bonds or do stuff like that. And I, I know myself anytime i deal with an exporter i better make sure i get paid on delivery or you know before that car comes off i'm getting my money and i make sure they know that up front because i'm always careful working with an exporter yeah and you know that going in and they can smell it a mile away like i know that some of the kindest exporters and don't take it i mean they send me all their cars so i'm not knocking them for their hustle but what I'm saying is, is so many more drivers that's that's got to connect to the business. Like they'll they get eaten, they get eaten up, and then they they're mad because yo you're gonna be out of business in three months. He's still gonna be eaten. 
and you're going to be looking for him and he's right in your face under a different name, you know, central dispatch will let them open an account under like the exporter. They'll have a dealer number, like a salvage. They'll open it up under a dealer exporter and you'll see like zero, zero one, or like, it's not a number. It's not an insurance. It's not a bond. Like it's, it's nothing. It's just their word and their money every month to central dispatch that allows right. them that. Yeah. And a lot of, a lot of those guys aren't even um, Americans or have American companies They They, they fly into the country and they're sitting, so maybe they're sitting in Jacksonville. I know guys that sit up in like Washington DC near Baltimore and they're just here buying cars and sending them back to their home country. You know, they're really just individuals. A lot of them. And a lot so. of them aren't even here. You know, a lot of them, you can tell that the, the the good ones because they always want things to go smooth those are the ones that are out of the country for the most part like they might have one of us set up as a terminal just delivered to this yard because they don't want any of those problems when the driver gets to the port like we picked up cars from walmart parking lot uh, on the side of the road the gas station parking lot where they a driver may abandon the car you know because he didn't have a dock receipt like you would just think after so many years in business, going to the port, exporting, that you would send a dock receipt, you know, with the driver. He can't do anything with the car except take it to a storage yard or keep it on his trailer because they're not going to take it at the terminal without the proper credentials. You know? Oh, man. But and getting just getting dock receipts from yeah, brokers. I, I, I don't know how many times it's just been it's it sucks. It's, it's, I haven't it's, delivered to a port yet, oh, man. personally. I, I I do a lot of port forwarders in New Jersey, New York, you know, Baltimore. Yeah. Um, but I haven't actually had to go in. Before. I've been avoiding that. But, well, like the, a, a lot of times delivering the, the, all the with all the dock receipts and the time, it just it does the car doesn't pay enough to deal with all of it. I skip it if it's going to the port. I skip it. <laughs> right. a lot of times you can negotiate, you know, but they're they're tough negotiators. Yes. Oh but the gosh. worst part is there's so many new carriers and so many carriers that don't have their game together where like you think you're negotiating, you're not. He already knows that you're gonna say one seventy five for Atlanta, you're gonna take it, you're gonna say two hundred, mm. he's gonna meet you at one eighty five. <laughs> You pick up the car at the auction. Get chicken nuggets. Got two flat tires, no front windshield, yeah. no title. He knows you can't deliver it, but you don't know you can't deliver it. You know, and and that's the thing. Drivers are starting to really learn though. And you have a lot of carriers. We have a lot of good carriers that specialize in the ports. You know, I love that. And you know, you learn them by name because you see them all the time. And um, the exporters can't really play them because. I mean, they specialize in it. So, so here, so let's go through a scenario. You got an exporter that's gotten you to get you. You just got to the car, missing wheels and windshields and everything, and and you got. What what should you do? Just well, one, you should bring it to me. That's a shameless plug because Good. that's what we specialize Good. in. We we support port compliant repairs. I haven't trademarked yet that I should though. I like it. We fix the windshields. Um, the tires, lower control arms, things that, that there's only three booking statuses in that port, running, none running, forklift. No matter how bad they fuss on the phone, it's going to fall up under one of them. And you just have to know what the status is. You know, if it's got a busted windshield and he doesn't want to fix it, it's a forklift. If a longshoreman can't get inside of that vehicle and steer it, if he can't steer it to the ship, it has to be put on a Moffat and a forklift has to take it to the boat. So, but, and the guys that run the port, they learn that because you can only sit there two or three hours so many times and not learn to master your craft. So, and you have to sit there until they get the booking right. Oh man. And so as the hall, as the car hauler, you're stuck. You're babysitting you're this. Stuck. Yeah. Or you bring it to us. Most of the time you can see that. Look, I see them. Like you can hear the truck flying down the road. They like literally are trying to throw the car off the trailer by the time they get to us because they've been sitting on the port for two or three hours 
waiting on paperwork or waiting on a booking status. First, the exporter doesn't want to change the booking status. He wants to leave it as a runner because that's the lowest cost for him. Uh, it costs more money. It's two fifty to three hundred to book it non runner. It costs four fifty to five hundred to book it as a forklift. So he wants you to get it in as a runner. And somehow they just think if they make you sit longer and that you're gonna get it in as a runner. So <laughs> oh it's just knowing gosh. your craft, really. Well, so but what but really if it's a run and if you're told it's a run and I think I've met drivers that live by this. If you're told it's a run and drive and it's not a run and drive, don't pick it up. Yeah. Which, I, unless they want it. A lot of people, they just want the load and the guy, most of the time the exporters, they're good. I mean, if a lot of times I see this, they put um, Jacksonville, they'll put the right zip code sometimes, but they want list that's going to the port. So you got a new driver thinking he's getting one. To, I know to that one. <laughs> I know that one, and that's why every time, really, as it, I will say, here's your here's your gold nugget of the minute, is that <laughs> when you book a load, when you call a load on Central Dispatch, I don't care what it is, the first question is, what's the pickup and what's the delivery? Yeah. And if the okay. answer is, oh, sweet old lady, oh, she used to oh. be a marine. That's awesome. <laughs> What's the pickup? What's the delivery? Because if you mention this old lady again, I'm hanging up. Jay, what do they say? Oh, please, please hold. Uh, uh, let me check. Let me check. Oh, oh. Okay, now, all right, I'm going to say it. Text me your company name. Right? You know yeah. that one? <laughs> Hi, I'm calling about a load on Central. Text me your company name. What do you mean, text oh. me your company name? What? Where's it picking <laughs> up at? Just text me your company name. I dispatch you now. Yeah, see, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> we dispatch you a long time. I dispatch you a long time. Now that's a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I dispatch you a long time. Oh, see, my gosh. If you see 322, we're 32226. If you see 32226, that's three, Blood two, Island. Two, two. Three, two, yeah, that's Blunt Island, uh, the port, oh. and zero six zip code. That's uh, Tally Rand. That's Crowley downtown. Um, yeah, it's going to the port. Mm -hmm. They'll put three two two oh three. That's the main zip code here, and they do that specifically. That's so that's all that's that's like the double brokering where it's like nineteen ninety nine Chevy Chevelle, nineteen ninety nine Chevy Chevette. Chevette. That's yeah. the same car. <laughs> 450 COD. <laughs> 500 quick pay. We got a Toyota Camry and a Toyota Carney. <laughs> other. Uh, what you say about other? <laughs> other? Oh, yeah. yeah. How about, well, how about uh, Mix Mix? Mix Mix, never yeah, forget, yeah. Never forget your Mix Mix. No, you got to love it. So, mix Mix. Um, <laughs> Well, you know, and I, and I and actually I was just noticing. I want to say this too. We're gonna we're gonna talk. We're gonna cover. Um, we're gonna talk. Maybe we'll do like one more topic, and then we'll wrap it up. Because I, Candy, I know you're tired, and um, yeah. and I and I hate to I hate to ruin a good thing and just turn it bad. Because this this has been one great show. I gotta say, mm -hmm. I, I'm happy every sh show after show. I mean, I love what's happening, but um, and this is our first five star panel. Yeah. yeah wow. I, I just, yeah. I just, yeah. I just named it a five star panel. Hey, if you say it, it must be true. This is the internet. <laughs> Make it a meme. <laughs> it should be a meme. It should be. I dispatched you a long time. Yeah. So you know it's true if it's a meme. <laughs> All if I could say any one thing, I would just like. A lot of the new carriers to to keep asking questions, but to um, to to know their operating costs and just be okay if be okay with saying no because it's it's almost like no. I mean, no gives you power. They'll call you. You know, they'll call you back if you say no quick. They go, oh, he knows his business. He's gonna get the job done. <laughs> Don't be afraid of no. Yeah, I, I I like that. I like that recommendation because um, it, you really 
you got to take control of your business from time to time. This is where, again, this is why relying on, I'm just going to say this, relying on a dispatcher as your business strategy can be dangerous because the dispatcher is just trying to book cars and get you loaded. And the dispatcher can make mistakes and get you into a car. I know this because as a dispatcher, I've booked cars that, oh, my God, I wish I hadn't done that. Yeah. They talked about you, too. Oh, God. <laughs> and, and then you're like, oh, my God, what am I going to do? And I'm twisting and turning, and I'm, I'm like, man, this is just sucks. And, and, and if, you, if, you, if you realize you've made a mistake, as I like to say, the first call you need to make is the last one you want to make. Make that. Just pick up the phone and go, I can't do it. I screwed up. We are not picking up this car. Can't do it. And I'll, I'll make up stuff. You know what? I just realized we're going in the other direction. And the driver's, <laughs> no, the no. driver's wife is pregnant. No. And it's Jesus. my oh, fault. No, and no. I got, I'm, I'm, I'm literally I'm about to be arrested. I got to go by. No, you get tired of those lies. They had a, the worst lies. That should be the show. Like who come the worst lies? Like it's it's only so many blown tires in a day. Oh. You know, I yeah. think when you lie on your truck and you say your truck's broke down and it's not, I think your truck should automatically break down within twenty four <laughs> hours. All right, just for lying on it. <laughs> Th th there's there's your lie i lied i lied to the last guy karma got me i gotta go <laughs> yep <laughs> just try the truth you know it sucks a lot of times well and you'll probably get cursed out but like if you if you call right away you can actually tell the truth yeah yeah it's exactly. the next day where you're lying yep yeah <laughs> yeah all the lies are sad too they're sad lies and, and, ne and never yeah. Nobody should ever say they'll do it for 50 bucks less. Never do that. It's a lot of people out here doing oh it. Oh, my it's God. A friend just told me last night about a guy that's he specializes in that because he runs like <laughs> it's like right. a really specialized lane. And he know they compete against each other for for like these cars on this lane. They know on Monday <laughs> these cars are going to be there. So he'll automatically call him and tell him, you know, I'll do it for or 450 instead of 500 what's because he knows the other guy does it at 500 so what's the name of your transport company 50 bucks less llc oh that's right yeah yeah 50 cent 50 cent 50, 50 cent 50 cent a mile yeah. 50. 50 cent a mile we can start calling him half dollar for short oh my uh, gosh that's three months till brokeville yeah llc three months to three, three months <laughs> I've, I've, I've been worse than that sometimes because I've actually been in Florida and called a guy and told him uh, he's going to have to pay me twice as much as he listed it for and had him agree and then refused to take the car. <sighs> <laughs> so I got him to go to from like 400 to 800 to get the car moved from like Pensacola to Miami <laughs> or whatever. And then I'm like, no, nah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> Yeah, and read the contracts. It's a lot of guys, you guys, they aren't reading their central dispatch contracts. A lot of brokers, oh, they have like four or five page contracts, and nobody's reading them. Nobody reads the contracts that they agreed to anymore. Well, and there, and and, and that, that's another area. And I I always find this to be easier said than done. Is that um, you know when it comes to the when it comes to the fine print, it's not that kind of show, Dave. <laughs> When it comes to the fine print and the contracts and enforceability, everybody, oh, you know, we shit. all want to think that we can, we can, we, we, we can deal from under the deck or make sure the other guy can't, or, you know, the terms of service, it's in the fine print, it's on the back of the box, it's on the food label. The fact is in, in business, in a business like this, there's very little time to get into all that finer print. And, and yeah. you know, and so it's it just it's frustrating um, when I, I get frustrated as again as a dispatcher when a broker says, "Well, it's in our terms and conditions." Really, because number one, that's not industry practice, and number two, I don't know anybody that's going to sit around 
take an hour break and at lunch and read your terms and conditions for a, a, a you know for a, a used car that pays a hundred bucks. I'm sorry, you know, please. Yeah, I do it with reputable like reindeer, like bigger companies. Because you can kind of look and see where they've well, been screwed over and they, in their turn. And they tell it to you. And that's what makes Reindeer a good company is at least they yeah. tell you. This is yeah. how we do things. Right? Yeah. Don't just... They teach a lot of people how to do business. Yes. If, if a lot of us modeled our structure right after them, there's nothing wrong with it to me, then, it, it, I mean, the sky's the limit because they always raise the bar. Since I've been dealing with cars full-time... Like, uh, it's a lady, I know, don't really name drop, but she's awesome. Her name's Kathy. I don't know. If she's I know still Kathy. There. Yes. But Kathy is you, awesome. Kathy, in 2006, she taught me a lesson. Like I'll never, ever forget it. I had a driver. He was in Colorado. I thought he was in Colorado. One of the cars had GPS on it and he was somewhere dotting it out. And the owner had already GPS tracked the car and knew he wouldn't be delivering <laughs> on time. So I'm just lying. Like I probably had like 18 oh, lies. Oh, He's oh. told me his lies. I've added my own lies. And she finally just stopped me and she was told me, she said, Hey, first thing is you get your drivers to tell you the truth. You're about to mess up a really good relationship by lying to us. Uh, just stop lying. Call your driver. Um, she told me exactly where he was. So uh, it was very embarrassing. He was starting it out like, 300 miles from <laughs> where he was supposed to be in five hours. And uh, yeah, but she gave me a real life lesson and I'll never forget it. Well, and you know, what's cool about Rain. We'll say this about reindeer too, man. Reindeer is getting a lot of good props this show um, is that reindeer just announced that they've got a new president of the company. Did you get that email? I think his name is Alan. Yeah. And I, oh, really? I'm not familiar with him, but I mean, listen, you got Elizabeth Payne, um, yeah. I've dealt with Brandon at times. Is it Brandon? Brandon? I think he's still the Kyle Ryan. They got Kyle, yeah. they've got a lot of very knowledgeable agents. That is a good company, and I yeah, mean they, they do have a pretty high bar of standard, um, which at times can you know catch you you know in uh, in a bit of a situation. But otherwise, yeah, I mean so um, that you know as much fun as we have and as much you know angst as we share we do one of our goals is to also prop up companies that are doing good yeah exactly yeah so i mean that was a good call that's that's pretty cool and i bet i'll bet i got i got 20 bucks that you're one of their preferred terminals we're terminal sir i was just about to say that the local towing uh the local stuff that we take care of is priceless somebody said it earlier where you can it's not even about naming your price. It's still realistic, but they just want you to get the job done. Like no BS, no save the excuses. Like just pick it up, just get it done. You know? Yeah. As long as you do that, you'll be in their good graces. Okay. Well, listen, this has been a awesome panel. This is a great time to end it. Um, I want to say, I want to say, I want to thank you, Dave, all right. I want to thank Dave at Clarksville Trucking. I want to thank Ty. There he is. Ty at CTS, my business partner at CTS. If you got a question about starting a car hauling business, we want to hear from you at ctsbusinesscoaching.com. I want to thank Paul Roberts at Max Premier Transport. Uh, if you got an enclosed, if you got a question about enclosed hauling, um, Matt, uh, Paul, can people email you? Is that possible? Yeah, my my email is Max Auto Hauler. M is in Mary, A is in Alpha, C is in Cat, S is in Sam. Auto Hauler at Gmail dot com. All right. And by the way, on that note, um, Dave, if people want to if people want to contact you, um, you're a fixture on this show. We've made videos of you loading. Um, so I and I know like we've had a few people reach out to you specifically. Can people contact you? Always. Clarksville Trucking at Gmail. Gmail.com. You know, yeah, you can call me at 931 320 0679. And there it is, man. A phone number. I mean, who doesn't like a phone number where you can give a call? I appreciate that. And also. Don't text me no dirty pictures. There you go. See? <laughs> 
It's not that kind of show. All right, Candy at Jack's Port Storage. So it's Jack's Port Storage at gmail.com. I'm telling you, if you need to know something about the port, and there is a lot to know, contact Candy. And she, you're down in Jacksonville, right? Yeah. Jacksonville, We're Florida. at 3701 Fay Road. And Seaport Services is the company. Uh, we're about two, a little bit over two miles from the port. Awesome. Okay, awesome. And I'll bet I, I might I might deliver a car to Jacksonville now just to see yes. Candy's operating. Yes. That sounds cool. Awesome. I'll tell you, I'll, I'll bring Come them to got Candy. Yeah, that's a good idea, <laughs> man. That's a great idea. And we're going to Jacksonville, baby. We'll see, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. And, and 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 that is our goal too. You know, you guys for tuning in. And by, so let's do this. I'll talk to the audience. I'm gonna let you guys go. Thank you guys so much. We'll end this meeting here. Thank you so much, everybody. All right. Thanks, Jay. Thanks, Ty, Dave, everybody, Candy. It's always good to see everybody. Peace out, you guys. Peace, brother. Peace. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, switch this camera back. As you guys know, I'm in the wrap-up stage of the show. And I do want to say this before I ultimately go, you know, um, whether you're a car shipping customer, auto transport broker, car hauling dispatcher, vehicle shipping company, car carrier service provider, I mean trucks, trailers, insurance, equipment, uh, car hauler supplies, auto transport intel is the number one recommended YouTube video channel for you. I have the top spot now. Um, I mean, there are other folks making car hauling videos, but if you are looking for a home to share and learn car shipping, you're going to watch Auto Transport Intel. It's every Tuesday night, 9 o'clock Eastern, 8 o'clock Central. Um, and I do want to hear from you. You can send me an email, autotransportintel at gmail.com. I do check every email, I read every comment, and I really appreciate every like, share, subscription. You want to click the notification bell and um, and the comments too. I'm getting more comments. I'm getting more emails. The channel is growing. It really, I mean, it's a great thing. We're over 4,200 subscribers now, just over a year and a half old. And um, and I am excited about Fleet February. You heard it on Auto Transport Intel first. I bet you you hear it somewhere else too, because it is catching on. This is catching on. So um, I really appreciate you guys being a part of the show, joining in the live chat. It means a lot. It's really it's pretty fun. And um, I had fun again tonight. I really did. I had fun, and um, I think the information was really flowing tonight. I want to say this too before I let you go is I want to make sure that you do tune in next week uh, to the Auto Transport Intel and Surge the Car Hauler live at Creeps Tea House. That's going to be in West Springfield, Massachusetts. That's next Tuesday night. And um, I'm really hoping to do more. I want to do more on location shows this year. Um, so if, Hey, if you want to talk about an event that I should be at, or maybe we should co-host something together, let me know. All right, you guys, I'm going to start up the car hauler. I really appreciate you tuning in. This has really been a lot of fun. Fleet February is going to be great. And we're working hard on the show. If you've got something to contribute, if you think that you'd be a good panelist for one of those shows, or if you are a fleet manager or a fleet owner and you want to talk about it, if you drive for a fleet if you uh, service a fleet, whatever it has to do with the fleet, I want you to feel like you're invited to be on the show and be a part of Fleet February. So, And after that, we're going to move into Matt's March, so Mid-America Truck Show. All right, you guys, here comes the car hauler. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's really been a blast. I'll see you guys next Tuesday night, live from Massachusetts. You guys take care. Thank you so much. And I will see you. Peace.